Yes. We ask you to please rise uh, for the opening prayer and pledge of allegiance before we convene our commission public meetings. Dear gracious and loving God, we ask for your blessings and guidance over our meeting this morning. Thank you for your incredible and sovereign power and work in our lives, your goodness, love, mercy, and kindness you shower us daily. Lord, we thank you for the many agencies that are in our community that share compassion and kindness. In this month, we recognize and celebrate. American Red Cross Month, since 1943 when President Franklin D. Roosevelt issued the first proclamation. Every president has followed. We are thankful for those that stand with food, clothing, water, and shelter in times of tragedy and disasters. Bless those employees, volunteers, and supporters that reach out to show your love in time of need. Father, we pray for the Spirit to work together to meet the challenges we face. Wherever our journeys lead us, may we spread love, joy, peace, and goodness and kindness to those we encounter. May you lead us in the spirit of unity. Now we ask this morning that you sh your face shine upon us with favor, and we act according to your will. These things we humbly pray in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner 
seeking your approval to add agenda item 6.10 um, to vote to approve reappointment of, of an individual to the Lake Wing County Housing Authority. A motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Aye. 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 Uh, they'll be added to the agenda 6.10. All right, moving on to <coughs> public comment on agenda items only. If you are here to speak about the sanctuary county's status, we'd ask you to please reserve your comments or questions until we give you the information. And at that time, I've asked the sheriff and the warden to be here this morning to explain what's been going on in Lake Cumming County. We researched this a great deal over the past, uh, well, significant period of time, especially over the past week. So we ask you to reserve those comments or questions after we prepare a statement for you folks. And then we'll, we'll welcome any questions or comments. I think we'll be able to answer a lot of it with our preparation. Is there any other um, items regarding the agenda that anybody wants to speak on? Yes? Bill? Real quick, Mark. Would you please come up? Sure. Introduce yourself. <coughs> Uh, first off, uh, Bill Fenners from Montgomery County. We had an open thing uh, discussion last week about uh, reports. At this time, I went back in the, in the archives and looked how things were done. I was the one who put that on the table many years ago. And we have made changes as we follow through. Uh, to make everything sensible, everything should be put in prospect. Uh, not saying a treasury report, but saying accounts payable and make an attachment with all, everything that, that the treasurer talks about. That way you can go back and the public can see that this is where we stand. It's nothing complicated. Been there and done that for a large corporation. <clears throat> we had to do it every time that people should have the right to them. That's one of the things. Can, can we have a, a gesture on that, please? Scott, I know you was here. We talked about it in depth. It started out, but now, under all the all the things that are going on, the report is simple to make an attachment to put on the minutes. When you look on the meetings, or on YouTube, of all, it's there, okay? But unfortunately, paper documentation is important. Not everyone goes on YouTube. That way you have a way to adjust different things, and you can see where how the flow goes. Mr. McDermott, I, I, you know, last week you made the, I was talking to Christian <coughs> about this, and you made the statement, it's not necessary. That was the statement you made. No, oh, no, I didn't say it wasn't necessary, I said it wasn't required. Excuse me. I was sitting there, I briefly heard you talking to Unfortunately, our three commissioners have the adjustment to make them corrections. They are elected people. And so as I'm an elected person in the county, I know how things work. So unfortunately, I'm not picking on anyone. But I think we should have that good prospect. Bill, you had a side conversation with the controller. Uh, Mr. sermon has been out of town for a week. We have, uh, have not had an opportunity to speak amongst the three of us. Uh, we will speak amongst the three of us, speak to the controller. No, let's uh, let, yeah. me, let me finish. Okay. And also speak to the treasurer before we begin to lose. But she gives a report. That's what I'm saying to you. Right. Thank you so much. I yeah. appreciate the time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, moving forward, reports. Kayla. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Presented for your ratification, our invoices due through March 13th, 2024, to be paid on March 6th. 2024 for $2,582,516.98. The breakdown is as follows, with 19.51% being funded by the general fund at $503,777.71. 12.99% is being funded by other grants and pass-through monies at $335,374.02. Four point three zero percent is being funded by RMS at one hundred and ten thousand nine hundred fifty six dollars and twenty five cents, and sixty three point two one percent is being funded by escrow 
at one million six hundred thirty-two dollars. I'm sorry, excuse me, one million six hundred thirty-two thousand four hundred and nine dollars. And I will say a really large amount of that escrow is funding for uh, children and youth services. That's correct. Yeah, one point six million is going through uh, pass through the C one. Okay. I have a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Uh, Any questions or comments regarding the tax report? No, I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. On the other side. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, moving on to information items. Uh, the status of Lycoming County as a sanctuary county. Okay, so last uh, Wednesday, a media outlet had posted nationally uh, the sanctuary counties and cities across the United States. And as that scrolled down, Lycoming County was listed. And since then, we have uh, fielded phone calls and emails. And uh, I will read you the following statement. Uh, this past week, we have had the, um, this all stems from the prison. It all stems from ICE detainers. That's what it stems from. And um, we have researched this. We have talked to a lot of people in the community. I've talked to the airport authority. I've talked to local hotels, owners, and I've talked to constituents. Night and day, all, all during the weekend. Back on May 9th, or excuse me, May 3rd, 2018, our solicitor, J. David Smith, read a following statement, which is in the commissioner's minutes. Simply put, like Cumming County, it's not a sanctuary county. It does not shelter illegal immigrants, nor does it interfere with any law enforcement agency or effort to identify and remove illegal immigrants from our community. Lycoming County complies with all mandates, orders of immigration authority and it cooperates with those authorities as required by the law. That's what our solicitor said back on May the 3rd, 2018. And that's what we stand by today. That's what this board of commissioners stand by today. At this time, I will have the sheriff, Mark Laws of Lycoming County, come forward to explain what happens with law enforcement in this county when they do encounter someone who is wanted by ICE. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning, folks. First, I want to thank you for coming to the meeting with the interest that you have in this uh, title called Sanctuary County. I'll start, I'll go through a couple air, uh, thought processes um, and, and then I'll, I'll wrap up with uh, how our warrant system works. My first comment is this. In other states, it appears that elected officials, non-law enforcement, can impose sanctuary county status. That can't happen here. If I oversee the warrant system in the county, thousands and tens of thousands of warrants that come through our system, and I'll get into that in a little bit. If an elected official were to try to block a process that we use with detention, with incarceration, with arraignment, uh, the elected official would be arrested. We don't, we don't work that way. Now, I'm going to follow up with this. This Board of Commissioners and every Board of Commissioners that I've been with since in my 15 years I've been here have never, ever, ever done that. They've done the opposite. Um, Sometimes ask why somebody doesn't get bail that maybe we all think someone should get, but that's not for us to decide, it's the courts to decide. But the commissioners, in my, I've been doing this 45 years, I'm the old guy in the county. I know the system really well. I was the president of the Law Enforcement Association for 10 or 11 years, and I am now the, uh, I'm now the, uh, uh, the senior officer of the chiefs in the county. 
the commissioners have taken an opposite approach of the sanctuary city issue. And that approach is uh, we need to put people in jail if they deserve to go to jail. Our commissioners, this board included, has, have never taken that approach with us. If they would, there would be uh, an issue, but there can't be an issue because our system doesn't allow for a county elected official, such as a commissioner level, saying, Sheriff, catch and release. The only catch and release thing that we do in this county is with the fishing pole. Okay? We don't do it with bad guys. We've never done it with bad guys. The stats that I want to share with you, and I apologize, I grabbed as many as I could, as quick as I could. We don't just, we don't just serve local warrants here. Uh, we have a United States Marshal Service operation in the federal building, and we are the Sheriff's Office, with the support of the commissioners, uh, are part of that task force. It's called the, the uh, United States Marshal Service um, Fugitive Task Force. That unit serves warrants that are local warrants and federal warrants. Our participation in that task force, while well, I've been sheriff, if I go back to 2014 and I go through 2020, we have served 254 federal felony warrants. Federal jurisdiction that the FBI, that any of the 17 or 19 federal law enforcement jurisdictions are responsible for, who, who, who issue those. And we have served state and local felony warrants, 2,290. So we're at about 2,600 since 2014. If I use another summary that I have, part of our yearly report summary, in 2017 we served out of the Sheriff's Office about 3,000 warrants, all levels. <coughs> summary, misdemeanor, felony, all, all levels. Local, state, and federal. This past year, and I just heard a stat with the commissioners just uh, in the last month, this is the, uh, the yearly summary. I can proudly say we went from 3,000 warrants in 2017 to 4,000 this year, this past year. We are grabbing them as fast as we can find them. I have, and now I've been doing some actual, some additional checking because I kind of second guess myself. All the years that I've been, as a, uh, been a leader in the law enforcement community, I have never had a jurisdiction tell me, or a police chief tell me, we grabbed an individual who had an ICE detainer and we left him go, because we were told to do that. Not one time have I ever heard that. And trust me, law enforcement will come to me and they'll complain if there's something they think we should be doing uh, as a law enforcement community. Not been done. We haven't even apprehended. Uh, I'm asked all the time. Is the, this is like the bullet issue, you know, where the government's taking our bullets. I talk to the federal firearms dealers. Government, are, government's not taking our bullets. People are buying our bullets. People, the public are buying our bullets for good reasons because you want to want to have a good stockpile of ammunition. But going back to the to the ice detainers, the the ice detainer situation would be this: if we would apprehend an individual with an ICE detainer. We happen to have the convenience of having, and most of you probably know this, we have an ICE office right off of Reach Road. We would make the contact. We would transport that individual to the ICE unit. And it would be for them to decide how they handle. It's not for me to tell them how to handle their, their uh, fugitives any more than it is for them to tell me how to handle ours. But no one gets caught and released. We simply don't do it. We don't have, I'm asked frequently, Mark, do we have, uh, you know, do we have an immigration issue? We don't see it. We don't have any sense of it at all that, it, that we have it. We have a big problem in this county and it's not, it's not immigration. It's what you're reading in the paper. 
it's the murders we're seeing and it's the dope related murders that you're seeing where we're slaughtering people. That's what our problem is. It's not, it's not the ICE detainer issue. Trust me. So I can take any questions from the commissioners or from the public that you uh, see fit, Commissioner? Does the public have any questions for the sheriff? Um, uh, over a year Karen. ago, we, uh, my name is Captain Burns. Uh, over a year ago, we visited Gamble Farm Inn, and I realized that there are a lot of the individuals right. that are being brought in through an agency in Lock Cave in Pennsylvania. Right. Um, and we were told at that time <clears throat> that if their visa or green card expires, they're just released. Is there any type of follow up? Uh, on a situation like that where uh, the folks are brought in uh, supposedly with whatever papers they have mm -hmm. and how much follow-up is being done on the people that are being brought in to work at the various locations in the areas. I realize that's Clinton County, but... Um, no, the young for men is in Jersey Shore. Yeah, yeah. That, where they house. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, I don't have, I don't know really the answer to that as far as if the federal the federal system does those kinds of checks. Um, but I'll say this with what I said a little while ago. Uh, if they were if they were illegals, because that's what they become, if, if that's what I understand you're saying. Yes. Ty Don PD, who is now like County Regional, and happens to be where happens to be where I live. Very aggressive department. Okay. Very aggressive department. I, I talked to the officer, I talked to the chief recently. We're not seeing anybody getting apprehended who has an ICE detainer attached to the arrest. Okay. We just aren't seeing it. We, we just aren't seeing it. I can corroborate that uh, with the warden. I've met with him uh, this week. We're comparing notes. We're looking at data. We just don't see it. Now, does it mean that they aren't going to work their way north? We don't get this border dip dealt with. We're going to eventually have probably the problem. And that's what we really need to focus on, on what's going on with this border. Um, but we don't have that problem here. And trust me. Uh, this Board of Commissioners, everything we ask of them in law enforcement, we get. A few years ago, if you recall, we had a summer, one summer, we had some trouble going on um, with some organizations, and we had to mount a massive response. We had a huge response of officers that were hidden throughout this county, about 250 of us, aviation, on a horse, on foot, under covers, buses. Um, the commissioners supported us by funding your law enforcement community about $140,000, if I remember. $122,000. $122,000 to get the equipment that we needed. So we continue to be prepared, we continue to be ready, and uh, um, again, I thank you all for the concern because we have the same concern you do. We're not a sanctuary county. May I ask something else? Sure. This may, I'm not sure if this is an answer that you would provide or we should. But I'll well, just try it. I'll, I'll give you an answer. Okay. Uh, the, the designation, uh, regardless of, of what the situation actually is, uh, these people are given apps on their iPhones coming uh, north to the border. And, of course, they're crossing. Now, if I'm looking to go to Pennsylvania or New York, I'm going to look on my app, and I'm going to go to the sanctuary counties. Okay? By, the list, by the list you're talking about, right? For, yes, correct. You're, you're talking about the app. Center for Immigration Studies, right? I'm, I'm That's where the list came from. Is that where if, if, you're, if you're referring to Jesse Waters, who I've always liked, I want to try to call him and talk to him about this. Um, we are on that list, and what's interesting is Butler County, I, I, I was the president of the state association about five years ago, and the president before me was Sheriff Mike Sloop from Butler County. Butler County addressed this, and what they did, they tweaked their language of the policy that they have. And what they did, they sent it to the Center for Immigration Studies, and they were taken off the list. We're going to work on that. I also I, said, I also said as the, I don't know, the chairman or the president. Let me interrupt you. That can't be done by the commissioners. That has that's to be what done, I was. I didn't know where. That has to be done by the uh, prison board. All right. Okay. Correct. This started back in 2012, when ICE and the prison board were contacted, and the language was formulated back in 2012, which the board will elaborate on in a minute. But commissioners are three parts of that prison board. There's a sheriff, there's a president judge, there's a district attorney, there's a controller. So the prison board will discuss this in the future. Okay. The app I was referring to, the list I was referring to, right. wasn't the list of Jesse Waters. I love Jesse, too. Right. But the, the, the app on their phone, 
uh, gives them the, the designated areas that they can concentrate on getting to. And that's what our concern, if this, in fact, you're, what you're saying, I, I believe you, uh, if they looked at, if I'm, if I'm an illegal and I'm coming, and I'm going to look, look for sanctuary, I'm going to, I'm going to jump on what that, what's on my app on my phone that's being provided by the Catholic Charities and right. the other NGOs. I said as, a, I said as uh, this year, the president of the prison board. I don't wear enough hats, right? Yeah. Um, we're going to discuss the tweaking uh, <clears throat> the policy tomorrow. It's okay. just, a, it's just a plan of words, and we're going to, we're going to send it. We're going to make contact with the Center for Immigration Studies. And we'll send it, and uh, we're confident our name will come off as Butler County's name came off. When that was first issued, that list, all 67 counties in Pennsylvania were listed, if any of you remember that, when it was originally listed uh, five years ago, like six or six years ago. All but 14 counties came off because they actually sent it back to the Center for Immigration Studies. So that's what we're going to do, and we're confident we'll get our name off that list. Okay. Thank any other you. questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, I spoke uh, to uh, Peter Bully Castro. I spoke to Representative Shalala's office. Right. And they're going to be getting back to me. Now, all eight prison board officials voted to uh, do away with the sanctuary. Uh, You're talking about Butler County, right? Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And now, an, an illegal is breaking the law as soon as they cross over the border, correct? So they're not on the radar until they get caught doing something wrong, correct? Right. Correct, correct. Okay. And it wouldn't be an ICE, right. an ICE yeah. detainer is not a legal hold. Correct. <coughs> the warden will elaborate on that. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and Le Lehigh County did this, and they held one. They held it a um, ICE detainer. They were, they were sued and lost for multi-million dollars. Right. What's your question, sir? Well, I'm just saying that, uh, have you heard anything about uh, HB 1840 from Representative Warren, no. Warner, uh, no. where they, if, if an illegal, or if, if a law enforcement of, of, uh, office holds an illegal for 48 hours or less than 48 hours or lets them go and they commit a crime then one of the provisions is that there could be a, a lawsuit against the law enforcement agency for uh, not following the rules right as, as far as that's concerned right and you haven't heard anything as far as that what, what HB, that? H, 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 but HB but regardless of HB 1840 if it becomes law we're transferring that individual to the ICE, to the ICE unit. Okay. We're, they're going to the ICE unit. Okay. Yeah, and I called up the, the, the processing center on Reach Road. When I called, they said, there are no beds there. We toured it, sir, we, we toured it. You can't sleep in there. It's concrete and steel. They can only hold someone in there for up to 12 hours. And they take them to three places in Pennsylvania. And I asked them where, where that was. They would not tell me. Right. You know. Right. I said, is it local? Yeah. Is, it, is it Lewisburg? Is it Allenwood? Right. You know. Um, do you have any? Do you have a game plan uh, in the event that we are? I mean, they're coming. You know, the, it's it's inevitable. Is there a game plan in place? That or have you uh, thought of this? Because this isn't this isn't something that we're going to be. There is no fence around Lycoming County. What what are we going to do? We're going to continue to transfer them to the ICE unit. I don't know what. Just keep picking them up. I okay. mean, we can't and, we can't yeah. put a wall. Yeah. You know. Okay. I, I I'd like to say there's something we can do, but I don't have a magic wand to yeah. figure it out. I didn't know if there was anything in place. You know that. Uh, we we need to stop we need to stop the flow of drugs and the flow of illegal immigrants into this country. Yes. And that involves something coming up in May and something coming up in, in November. That's what we need to stop. Yeah, okay? Right you know, let's, let's go back a little bit here. And for everyone who don't really think about this, in 2007, 2008, when the, when the natural gas boom hit this area, I said on land which they did this. 
Okay. They were all Mexicans. They did a fantastic job. Never had a problem. They come and did their job. But all of a sudden, now, and I understand what the problem is. We, you know, why wasn't it addressed many, many years ago? Unfortunately, you were not at the helm. Okay? I'm going to put this on the floor so you understand that without the natural gas that hit this area, like Cumming County would be in a big tussle. And if anyone don't believe that, that's a fact. I think by, I think by nature, we many times react to problems. You know, self-anticipated problems, if you don't have it, we don't have crystal balls. M much of the time, we react to what's happening in, in the culture and in the community uh, versus trying to build safeguards before we get to that. We're so, we're so busy. We're so busy putting out fires with what's happening in the community from a sense of the criminal justice system, it's tough to to predict. It, and that's that's fine, but under under circumstances, different jurisdictions in different areas, each township or borough, depending upon their their, their status, how they're stated, uh, might not have no police, uh, police protection. Okay, this isn't. I'm not going backward, but some areas have to rely on state police. Uh, our barracks down here in Matoriasville, very undermanned. They don't have enough people. We'll never see enough people down there because we're a rural area sitting out in the middle of nowhere. So, you know, everyone should have protection they can call. But unfortunately, there's a dollar and cents figuration in order to join a firm. $276,000 rolled by not too long ago in order to have protection because they have to have money, a building, and to man their staff. There's a lot of stuff that goes into this, correct? Am I not correct? A lot of expense. So that's that's a status on that. So you, and, and I fully understand that what everyone's talking about here, but you know, at the end of the day, there's other things we have to get, consider too, how how things happen and go about. We, we can't control too much of the future because it's not, not in our jurisdiction because we're a rural area community. And with the, if you may press on this, Tell them what, what, how much money the, the federal government gave to the county to put their building in. Put the building where? The building on Retreading. I don't know the answer to that. Well, see what I'm saying to you. It's, 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 the problem is they're not doing anything down there other than processing. Bill, we didn't receive any money from the federal government. You didn't get any for the land? No. no. We no. Oh, that, that's, that's the yeah. question. Yeah, no. Okay, okay yeah, that's, that's fine. Pro, that's private. Yeah. That's it's all private equity. equity. Yeah. Okay, so it's private, it's equity. Right. Yeah. So, and so the the, of, at the end of the day, the uh, area. Yeah. at the end of the day, with this whole thing being said, you can only do what you're allowed to do, correct? And that goes comes about from the coding of the county. Is that not correct? No, our our authority comes from multiple. It comes from local, state, federal. Right, law. but you but you go by the coding of the county, correct? I, no, my, I have I have statutory requirements. By local, state, and federal. Okay, that's fine. There's, a, that. the, there's a county code, but yes, I just yes, I have yes. to follow all, right, all the right. statutes. Well, that's that's fine. I just wanted to put that. Right. In. This goes back when they started national gas. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Sir. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Could you please name, state your name? Steve Falls from Muncie. Thank you. Uh, you're talking uh, warrants from ICE or uh, people that are breaking the law, but there are the influx of people that aren't native or original to our area. I see them all the time. I see people, I go to the river and stuff, they got kayaks and the one vet, they look at me like, what the heck are you doing here? You know, in the place that I've grew up. And, uh, things of that nature, they may not be breaking at all, but you see them when you go to the Wise Market or Walmart. So they are here, they are coming in. Unless, I don't know where these people, those types of people are coming from. Well, and sir, can I ask you a question? Sure. How do you know they're illegal? I didn't say illegals. Okay. No, I didn't we say welcome illegal. anyone. We welcome as anyone. As long as they give them permission to come across that border and bring them in, they're not illegals. That's exactly But I'll, I'll state this. <laughs> what I've heard is, well, they look different. I've heard that from several people. Well, Just because are. someone looks different, doesn't mean they're illegal. We welcome anyone in this county that is legal, that is legal. We welcome any people that are legal. Right. What we're talking about is illegal people that are coming in from the southern border. We don't want that in our community. No one wants that in our community. They're breaking the law once they cross that border. 
But when you sit there or anyone, or anyone says, well, they look different. That's wrong, and it's not welcoming, and it's not helping anyone in this community. We have jobs open that people don't want to fill, and people do want to work. And if they are a minority and they want to work and they're legal, we welcome that. What, what I'm saying, sir, what, what I'm saying to you uh, with regard to what the commissioner just said, if you take the 7,000 warrants that we have handled since 2018, there hasn't been one of those warrants identified that's been attached with a, co a hit confirmation called an ICE detainer. We know that illegals across the border, that there are a percentage of those that have criminal history. What I'm saying to you is, of everything we've ever had, every single warrant, we've not had an indication of what I think you're trying to describe, that maybe they, there are people who have committed crimes. And there are people, you know, there are people who commit crimes that we don't know, but, but we don't have any sense that they're here. We have no sense that they're here. And we, and we, and we stop, this is 7,000 warrants. This, can, this, this county law enforcement stops tens of thousands of people a year, and we don't have any sense of it. I, I'm not trying to be racist. I'm not trying to, but these are people that aren't, they're coming from someplace. Are they coming from New York? Because they're migrating. Uh, I'm not saying they're causing a, a large problem or they're illegals. I'm not saying that. But there's a different group of people that aren't normal. And, and you think they should? This area. You think they should no. be here? No, I'm just saying that's where they're coming in. They're, they're Who's coming in? These people are coming in. Are they allowed? Are they allowed to come here? Sure, they are. Oh, come on! I can't wait. Okay, <laughs> sir. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, my name's Gordon Spots. I live in Royal Sock. I'm a senior citizen, so I write the city bus. Okay. Well, one day, here's these two young Hispanic men, clean cut, military age. These little devices in their hands. They wouldn't speak to anybody, didn't speak English. Got, and this is a defense of Steve. Gideon in the back of the bus stood there and looked at the little electronic device and were laughing. Didn't look around in the eyeball and, you know, uh, anyways, didn't look around, see anybody. This was what's coming into our country, military age, illegals. That's what I saw, and I followed him down, stayed on a bus, he went down towards Pennvale. So I'm a, I'm, an event, I'm a veteran of the Air Force, I was a law enforcement, okay? So I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. So I took it upon myself to walk into Pennvale into the office, and I said, and I called the lady off to the side, nobody could hear, and I said, listen, be honest with me. I said, are you housing the legals here? Oh, no, 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 no. These men, and you for your reports, we have, they have military age legals that are coming in here. These two young men, yes, they look different, but they were young guys that looked around, and I'd say they're late teens, early 20s, military age, clean cut, clean shaven, dressed nice, dressed to the hill, and you can't tell me they were legal. I, I just want to make a comment in defense of this. These are not normal times. The, the girl that got raped and mutilated by an illegal in Georgia, a 14-year-old got gang ra raped, a six-year-old got ra uh, kidnapped and raped before they dropped her off by illegals. We can't just not be aware. We have to be aware, and we have to, and, I, right. and I appreciate what you're doing. God knows we do. I know you don't. Y'all don't have a, an easy job. I get it, but these are not normal times, and we we the the time for us uh, as residents of this county has come to be alert and to watch what's happening, and we are going to start documenting things. Uh, Scott alluded that the other, to that the other night, and I've asked that from Let me a give number you an example, of our group. Kathy. The Torso Police spoke to me yesterday. Three people saw planes coming in the airport. They're definitely coming in, no doubt about it. <clears throat> Give us the time and date. They gave us the time and date. It was last, I believe, last Tuesday, in the middle of the night when they were coming in. The chief of police checked into it. Okay. Everything is videoed at our airport. You, you said Everything. that. I'm taking the that. The tower shuts down at 11 o'clock. Yep. The time that they said those planes were coming in, they watched the video, there's nothing. There's nothing. 
That's Again, fine. You know, I, I listen. I, we hear both sides. And that's the, that's that. the chief of police yesterday telling me in Matoorsville. Okay. That he personally checked it out, the video, and he says, "Any." And I talked to the airport authority chairman. You find me the time and date that they say they're coming in. We'll watch the video together. He says, we'll watch asked, it together. We've asked that. Yes. Yep. And he said, we have nothing to hide because it's not happening. And so, again, he said, this is the chief <laughs> yesterday, Jeff Jarena, said he checked it out. It's not true. Okay. We'll take that. Okay. And in defense of what Steve's saying, we have to be aware. Right. We cannot and, let and our guard We have any that. reports. We, everybody has to be aware. Yeah. We want everybody on guard. You bring us this information. We don't have the authority to do certain things. A lot of stuff. Nor do we try try to say that we do. But we will give it to the law enforcement people, and they will check it out, just like Chief Trina did. Okay, that's what we ask. Thank okay. you. And if I could just make a comment, I mean, there's there's a couple things there. We we got to remember that our airport now is is until mid March when a commercial airline comes back. There's a lot of non-commercial private flights that come in and out of our airport. I was down the other day, and I think there were three flying out as I was flying in. Um, so we got to remember, there's, there's a lot of business people that are flying through. They're, they're not bringing people here. But I agree with what everybody's saying. we got to watch that and make sure it's not happening. Um, the other thing is I know, and, and one gentleman said he was from Loyalsoc, um, Loyalsoc had probably 40, 50 Venezuelan guys that were around Loyal Sock putting in fiber optics. So although, yes, they, they look different than, than we do, they were here doing a job. No, those little phones were not. Well, no, I'm not, I'm not discounting what you were saying, sir. I'm just saying that. Military age. Right, but I'm just saying that at country. the same token, there's, there's 40, 50 other Venezuelans that are staying in a hotel in Loyal Sock that are working in Loyal Sock. They've come up from Reading, Pennsylvania to install fiber optics. So as we're looking at stuff, we got to we got to we also got to give some people the benefit of the doubt that they may be here working. Not everybody that's here is here illegally. I agree exactly what everybody's saying. We have to be on our guard because it can be <coughs> happening and we don't want any of those incidents to happen in Lake County. Let me ask a question real quick if I may. Yes. All right. I'm an armed citizen. All right. I'm armed. If I would have to see an illegal attacking one of our citizens, and I shot and killed him, what would happen to me? Sure. Yeah, no, you wouldn't be arrested. You're covered. You're covered to protect yourself or another human being. If you see somebody who's being assaulted and is in fear of imminent serious bodily injury or death, that's very clear in Pennsylvania Crimes Code, been there for 50 years. You have the right to protect another life as well as your own life, and if you can justify it, uh, I would expect you would take the proper action. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. My wife works in Rite Aid in Montoursville. Four Hispanic men came in, could not speak English at all, came up to the counter after cruising through the store, and wanted to Western Union $1,500 to Mexico. They had an expired visa. And she called the manager up. The manager came over, looked at the visa, and said, sorry, sir, we can't help you out. They needed an interpreter, right? Mm -hmm. Is that something that they could have called law enforcement on the, an expired visa? You know, uh, and they, trying to they you know, make, send this money through this, Western Union. If the store makes the call to law enforcement, uh, the, the agency of jurisdiction would respond. Uh, it, if they got the call, I would presume, and they—I don't know what they would do. I don't know. I don't know how that would apply to uh, whether they're here lawfully or not. But they could certainly make the call. Well, she's going to be talking to Jeff and making a report. Okay. Yeah, please have her make a report. Yeah. Yeah. Just so that it's it's validated. Because yeah. they might contact ICE and say we have an expired visa here. Right. And I do appreciate all that you're doing. We know that. Now, now, you said that you're going to be having the rough edges smoothed out within a week or so, correct? You're talking about the sanctuary status. Yeah, we're, we're going to have that language. We're going to discuss it at uh, some point tomorrow and probably uh, by the next board meeting we'll have the, uh, the language completed. But we're, we're going to get it there as soon as we can get it, get the language, the language that we think works for them, uh, we thought. 
that it worked the way we had done it, but it evidently had not. How would it get put out to the general public so that they'll know? It'll go on that site. The county had all 67 counties, the state all 67 counties on that site originally, they're down to like 14. They pull them off as they recognize that they're not there. The prison board is a public meeting, and uh, so we would we would introduce it at the prison board, vote on it publicly at the prison board, and then it would oh, they'd be notifying the website. Okay, nothing in the newspaper though. It will be because the prison board is covered, it's a public hearing, so um, the local paper will be covered. Pat's at every one of our prison board meetings, aren't you, Pat? I'm giving you a plug back there. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I she had her hand up first. Okay. Then we'll go to you next. Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, Carol Johnson. Simple question. A couple. Um, Scott, you, did I hear you say that at 11 at night, that there's no, what's at the airport? The, the tower The tower turns off at 11 o'clock at night. Okay, so the way that this area would monitor any flights would be by the cameras, you said? If, if that someone has, heard something. That, it, it, everything has to be logged. The gate's locked. Everything has to be logged. So they still have to have clearance to come in at nighttime. All so, right. That, that's what I wanted yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah. The FAA has to. The FAA would know about it. The, and they have to list all flights out of all airports. Yes. All of them. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And one more thing. Because this is such a big issue, not just here mm -hmm. in the state and in, in the nation, do you all consider the possibility that you need a major task force where they're working on all the aspects of it, but also I, I, my guess is there's a lot of the public that would like to be in this meeting, mm -hmm. just informational, back and forth. Yeah. That's it. We would, we would uh, have the intelligence of, of the LEA and the sheriff would heads up and also the district attorney would bring that to the commissioners and request it. What's the LEA? Like, I mean, law, like, I mean, law Enforcement Association. Oh, okay. right. Law Enforcement Association, which is comprises of all the local municipalities, police departments, and sheriffs. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to add to what Kathy and others are saying that uh, I go to Giant Food Store every once in a while. They have certain things wise and and I know a lady who works at the computer checkout there at the giant store. And uh, sh we were talking one day when I was checking out, and I, we were talking about the situation with illegals in that, and that there may be ghost flights coming in. What you said, Mr. Metzger, basically in 2018, there was nothing happening. We were not a sanctuary county. But Trump was in the presidency then also. And things changed radically in 2020. Um, but this lady at Giant told me that she has seen, she works there a number of days a week. It's different times when she's seen a main majority of Hispanic speaking people one day and a lot of Chinese, whether they're communists, whether or not coming in on other days. And she says they have smartphones, they have debit cards, and we know what this administration has done with this. But I believe that there have been ghost flights, if you want to call them that, whether you're sanctuary, county, city, or not. They're going to do what they're going to do, and you can't stop it until things change at the end of this year. But I just wanted to pass that on to you. And when I've been at the Wise store last year in Montoursville, when I walked out the door to go out, there was a woman standing there at the entrance. She was in long garb. She looked Indian, East Indian. She was holding a child, and she was holding a sign that said, Please help me, we need money. And I just, she was standing right there holding this baby. I gave her five ones. And then late last year, there was a man, and it probably was his wife, and there was a little child between Walmart, or between Walmart 
and Wises. They were standing under this tree. He was holding a sign that stated, can you help us? We need money. So that's a sign right there. If these people are here to work, why were these two people who are not from the area holding signs can I, needing money? Can I ask you a question? Yes. Have you ever seen a white person panhandle? No, I have not. Never. They, were, they were not white. No, no, no. I, oh, I understand I, these. Have you ever seen anywhere? Have you ever seen yes, a white person? Yes, when we were in Las Vegas in okay. 2016. In Giant. Have you ever seen no. a white person with a smartphone or a debit card? No. Never? You've never seen a white I've person with a smartphone it. and a debit card? I, I only notice it when I check out. And I've not noticed that in our wises locally in the Floresville or the Giant. I Wait. only go in Giant once in a while. You've never seen a white person with a smartphone? I've seen a white person with a smartphone. Okay. Have you ever seen a white person are, are with you, a debit card? Are you trying to be smart? No, I'm asking you, when you, when you said the, the Chinese person had a smartphone and a debit card. I don't know. And that's what you said about it. I don't, I don't understand what makes them, I was talking, what makes that a problem. I was talking about the lady who works in there almost daily at the Giant. Okay. I didn't see those. She was talking about this. She said something is going on in Oil Sock Township. So if you see someone who's not white and has a smartphone and a credit card, that's an issue? That's my question to you. What's the issue with that? The Can I say something? Hold on, hold on. I ask you a question. This is not a racial thing. We're here because we're getting the illegals and we're worried about well, that. Hold on, hold on. Make it Can a I, racial issue. I, it's I, not a ra can I, not can I speak? This is an illegal. Can I speak a second? Let him speak. Everything, everything, everything you're, you're making it sound like she's talking about a racial person. You know, racially. You know why I'm saying that? If you stop, I'll, I'll finish my sentence. You know why I'm saying that? Because every person that she mentioned was Hispanic, Chinese, or Indian. The, the reason it sounds racial is because every person she brought up was of a different race. I can tell you this. I coach basketball. And we had a family on our team who was originally, well, the kid was on our team. The whole family wasn't on our team. And the, the family was originally Puerto Rican. They were, the parents were born in Puerto Rico. The father is now a medical doctor. He is a doctor. They are here, legal. But when they speak to each other, even in their house, I have been to their home. When they speak amongst the family, they speak in Spanish because it's easier for them. Does that make them illegal? Does that make them less than? Of course they have cell phones and, and debit cards. The father's a doctor. But when they speak to each other, they speak Spanish. I have a buddy of mine from college who is an accountant in Manhattan who has a $2 million lake home. And his, his wife, her mother, is French. She was born in France. When his wife speaks to her mother, who now lives in New Jersey, they speak French because the mother can't speak English. But it doesn't make them illegal. It doesn't make them bad people. It just means they speak a different language. So just because you're around Hispanic people who look Hispanic, or Chinese people who look Chinese, who speak a different language, it doesn't make them criminals, and it doesn't make them illegal. It just makes them different. And back to the other comment about people coming yeah, from yeah, the I, number one, The number one industry in Lycoming County, you know what it is, right? It's tourism. Oh, tourism? Okay. I, I don't you know where tourists come from? Outside of like coming no, County. Listen, no, this, the reason <laughs> that's what tourism here is. is because there's an illegal uh, invasion coming on, and these people just happen to look different, and they fit what's coming across the southern border, okay? They're coming across the southern border. This is why we're alarmed. We aren't used to seeing a large population or people that, that uh, you know, Fits that description. So are are you, you seeing that now? Listen, hang on one second. I saw I saw those two guys on a bus. You can't. You saw me. two guys on a bus. They're military aid. Hey. So you watch the news. You watch the news, Mark. Yes. They're yes. military aid. Excuse me. So what does that mean? Stop. What does please. that mean? We're stop. supposed to be looking for that. Listen, please stop. This is getting into a debate, which is inappropriate. 
Okay. I ask for questions for the sheriff. Not debate between the audience and the commissioners. So I ask you to please direct your comments or questions at the sheriff at this moment. All right. I have. I get. I get tired of this. Uh, this tyrannical government that we have in place that's lying to us and things are going on and they're not. They're not being honest. And that's why we're all here because I'm just sick and tired of what's going on with this country. I didn't go to the military for no reason. Were you in the military? No, I was not. Okay. I was served in the military, right? I didn't go to my, I'd go to war and fight for this country and put up with this bull crap that we're putting up this tyrannical Biden government. Okay, sir. So these individuals are coming in here. We, we are addressing what can only take place in Lycoming County. I have no control over the federal government. We all disagree with what's going on at the southern border. We are in agreement. I think everybody in this room is in agreement with that. When people break the law, they should be dealt with. Okay? We all agree with that. We have addressed this, what we could do locally. Like, Cumming County is not a sanctuary county. Well, We've said that. Why are we seeing these people okay, coming here? Okay, don't interrupt me, please. It is not a sanctuary county. We made that very clear. We had a sheriff working on it. If there's no more questions for the sheriff, we're going to move on to the ward and how we handle it. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, Terry Lockley from Muncie. And a lot of the residents there, um, and I'm assuming you could answer this question, when we saw that the processing center, you know, um, was over there on Reach Road, that caused a lot of alarm. And we understand that that processing center was, did they usually process it before bringing that facility? You know, putting the facility there, they did that in the prison? They did over at Allenwood. Processing Center was at Allenwood okay. for space. Uh, they had to relocate, and they relocated to the Ridge Road area. Okay, so you say they need space, but you said you've done like seven. No, I said no, no. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Allenwood, the, the, the Allenwood prison system where we have good contacts indicated that space became an issue for them. When we say space, I meant for staff. For staff. They didn't have offices. They didn't have their own boardroom. They didn't have a place to store their ammunition. They didn't have a gym that they could utilize. So they needed space for their own staff. Correct. Okay. So because, and that was the second question. Because you said that you haven't really then, of all the warrants, the 7,000 warrants that you've done since 2017, I think, um, you've not had any that needed to go over there. We've not had any. If we're talking about, if we're talking about the detainers, we not had any of those, I'm not saying warrants, we're talking the detainer issue. Okay. We've not had any that have been detained, detainers that have been attached to individuals that we pick up. Okay, when you say detainer, not knowing the legal, so if there's a, a warrant out, so you get them and there's a warrant out for them and it has a detainer attached to it, or this is just any illegal, right? So if, if, we have, if, we have an, if we have an individual who's attached to an ICE detainer, and, and we have a warrant, that individual stays in our custody for the entire duration of the status of that warrant until that person goes through the county system and either gets released on bail, gets released eventually uh, because he or she serves their sentence, or they go to state prison. That individual remains under county jurisdiction until that is satisfied. If there is a detainer attached, ICE is contacted, and once that individual's requirement is satisfied from the county court system and the county judicial system, then they would be transferred to the ICE unit, which is the unit over near Reach Road. On Reach Road, but yet we've not done any of that, so nobody has gone there. I have. I don't have any data at all that has a nice detainer attached to anything of the seven thousand warrants that we have. And serving and we're, so we're not seeing it. I'm, 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 I'm here to tell you, if there are 100, 200, 500, I'd be telling you that. Okay, that's I'll good. have any. Good. That's it, it, is, it is good. And it may be a sign that we're as proactive as we are in this county. You won't find counties around us that have 7,000 warrants that have been served in eight years. See, very good. Very impressed. Um, another question is, um, the residents also, you know, I have been talking and want to know, is there actually a way that we can contact, I understood that the the citizens can contact the sheriff's office and they can, some, you have some system to let us know who is being left back in, whether they've been incarcerated or whoever you let back into our community. Is there a way that we can? I, I don't have that. I don't have to capture that data. Is there a way? I, I don't have a need to. There's no data. There's no I, data. So we will never know as citizens to know um, who is 
being released back in anything. Um, you know, I do know there's like a system if I was, uh, you know, a victim. I, I appreciate what you're asking, but you're asking. Is, you're asking for. You're asking for a tremendous amount of work for nothing that for nothing that's there. This might be a question for the word. Um, yeah. And oh, okay. <laughs> and sorry. Come on. There, there is a system. Sorry, Cher. There is a system, and you don't need to be a victim. Savin is the name of the system. Oh, you can right. go in and register. And typically, you would register for a specific person. So if you are a victim, and the person that is convicted of the crime to which you're the victim, you can register at that point. And then when that person is going to be released from custody or transferred to another location, there is a notification that goes out. This is a system that we cooperate with, and the district attorney's office cooperates with within the state. So we, so if we weren't a victim, or we have to know a certain individual that has been, or is there a way we can just know, hey, these people are being released? Into you, you would have to know that specific person that you're looking for. There's not a system that tells you every time a person gets released from our system. Uh, the county prison does about anywhere from 1,700 to 2,500 commitments and releases per year. Oh, wow. So you'd be getting notified continuously all day, every day, whenever somebody gets released from the system. But if you know specifically there's a person, and you don't have to be a victim, that's, that's the, I guess, the misnomer there is, you don't have to be a victim. You can go in and register, and if you have a family member who's in jail, and you'd like to know when they're going to be released, you can register, and you would know when that family member is being released. Okay, quick, so you said it's SAVIN, like S-A-V-I-N. S-A-V-I-N. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay, Warden, why don't you, uh, let's, let's, let's like, go ahead. And then we'll answer, we'll be first questions. Go ahead. But, right, and, and so the county, um, the county prison, and all county prisons are, are governed by Title 37, Chapter 95. And so any person that is brought to the county prison by law enforcement, we have to have a legal hold. That doesn't matter who they are. We can't just accept somebody. The sheriff couldn't arrest somebody, bring him to our door and say, here's, here's the person. We, we're paperwork driven. We need a legal commitment. So if a person's brought to our door and attached to that legal commitment is an ICE request for hold, we will accept the person on that warrant with the ICE hold. And then once that warrant is satisfied and the person is no longer needed to be in our custody, we contact ICE to allow them to come assume custody of that person. That's a practice that has been in place for over 10 years. Um, we addressed this back in 2012. 2012. Right, and we contacted the um, local ICE department and their officials, coordinated this with them, and we've cooperated with them. They were fully um, compliant with our recommendations, and so we followed that practice. That's, that's not new. That's not from 2018. This is something that's been going on for well over a decade now. Um, and so we'll work, and, and we do, I, I can't speak for every other county prison, because we, we all have the same function, but we all do it a little bit differently. But I can tell you the county prisons that I've talked to that are not on that, I, that CIS list, we do the same thing they do. But our name appears on there, so we're naturally a sanctuary city. We're not a sanctuary city, we're not a sanctuary county. We cooperate with Immigration and Customs Enforcement. We hold people on legal authority and judicial review of the courts. We cannot hold somebody without that. There has to be a commitment from a, a judge, a magistrate, or some other legal commitment. Without that, it doesn't matter who the person is or why they're coming to us, we can't take them. We would tell the law enforcement officer, if they have committed some crime that you need them to be committed on, a judge needs to issue or a judicial review needs to happen, send us that person along with that legal document and then we'll hold them. Same thing for release. We can't release somebody without that. We can't just say, okay, well, you've been here long enough. It's your turn to go. We have to get a legal document to release that person. So it's all paperwork driven on our end as far as our ability to maintain people within our custody. And isn't the issue that ICE detainees can be held for 48 hours with no charges? That's a request. That they, can, that they request to you to hold this person with no charges. And what Lycoming County says is we're not holding anyone with no charges. 
because that's what happened in Lehigh County and they got sued and lost millions of dollars. Right, Some, if somebody comes into, and I think the sheriff already touched on this, if somebody comes into law enforcement custody and the only hold on them is an immigration request, they're transferred right into immigration custody. ICE is contacted immediately to, to transfer them into their custody. So that, in layman's terms, the reason that we're on the list is because we don't cooperate with the 48-hour hold. No. Is that not right? No, we don't believe that. We believe it's just the way we word it. It's just words. It's the way we word it. It's the way we word it. It's the way we word it. The guideline. Yeah. Okay. Play on words. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because and, and we mentioned Butler County, and again, I, I'm not speaking on behalf of Butler County, but I, I spoke to their officials at their jail and just kind of went down how we do it and how they do it, and it's the same. You do the same way. Butler County's not on the list. We are. We received, uh, Sheriff was able to receive through the request of us about Butler County a proposal to terminate Butler County statu sanctuary status. And this is the, the language we're going to go by when we discuss this at the prison board meeting. Yes. So, so Scott, sorry. You promised him. Like, well, I'm sorry, yes, I did promise <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Yes, John you go Tobin, first. I live here in the city, and I had a question for the Sheriff, and thank you guys for all the information. I have a question as to if you encounter an illegal immigrant that doesn't have an ICE detainer or a warrant, let's just say it was somebody was accused of shoplifting and they got stopped or you had to, but you, you encounter an illegal immigrant with no papers, no green card, but they don't have an ICE detainer or a Same warrant. Same protocol. You just release them back out? No, we contact ICE and we transport you them. You say we got, we got an illegal mm -hmm. here and... Yeah, it's, it's so a, it would be up to them. It's incumbent on them to deal with it. You know, okay. I'm not releasing anybody. Because, like Pete said, I mean, right? It, it's a it's a felony to break into this country illegally, right? Absolutely. So, so theoretically, they broke the law, correct? Correct. Right. Right. Then it's in the federal authorities' hands after you yes. encounter. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay. So. State your name, please. I'm sorry, Betty Biamengo. Um. So my understanding is, we're all sitting here saying we're not a sanctuary city. However, we are recognized as a sanctuary city. That's why we're on that list. County. County, County. whatever. We're on That's the website. That's why we're on the list. Yes. Okay. And it's my understanding back in 2018, according to the Wingsport Sun Gazette, May 6, um, 18 article, um, Solicitor McDermott. No. At that time. Solicitor Smith. No, it stated McDermott in the article. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, he's, not, he's not a solicitor. He's, not a solicitor. he's many things, okay, but he's not well, a solicitor. He wears many hats, but that's okay. not one. Sorry, county chief clerk and director. There you go. Thank you. There Sorry is. about that. <clears throat> At that time, said the county does not refuse to hold individuals with ICE detainers in order to obstruct ICE, but instead, because the Third Circuit Court of Appeals in Philadelphia <clears throat> ruled in March of 2014. The state and local prisons are not required to hold people due to an active ICE detainer. He also said that he proposed that holding individuals with active ICE detainers <clears throat> may be against the Fourth Amendment, which gives people the right to be secure in a person's house and so forth. It was my understanding that that was probably what led to us deciding to make the determination that we no longer wanted to honor detaining the ICE detainers. Morning. Explain exactly what a detainer is. Okay, right. and, well, a detainer, I understand, right. according to the judge in one of the cases, stated that um, there is basically a request, and that there's no federal circuit court that's ever <coughs> described a nice detainer as anything but that. Okay? <clears throat> so I know you were, you're concerned about the Fourth Amendment and the charges that could come and what Lehigh ran into. And you're right in the fact that <clears throat> if somebody is arrested, you can hold them and charge them for whatever they did in our county for the length of time that their right. sentence is for. And if a detainer comes in, you need to let them go. No. To, we don't you let don't them have go. to hold them. We don't let them go. We transfer them to the ICE unit. And, and it's, and it's, as long as it's within the required period of time. We turn them over to the ICE agents. Right. We don't let them go. Right, as long as you've notified ICE and they got their people within the required period of time, that's correct. Betty, when I was over at parole, I, I had two instances in my 32 years where I found out someone we had on supervision 
was wanted by ICE. I caught them over at Allenwood. They came right over and picked them up. And they were gone. We never saw them again. Okay, so where I'm going with this is um, Clark County in Georgia, it's Athens and Clark County, had the same comment in regards to their sheriff office would no longer honor detainers set in place by ICE. That was in 2018 when they made that decision. That's the same county that Larkin Riley was murdered in. So my question to you is, you say you're going to be meeting with the prison board and you're going to be making a decision to make the change in Burbage. And I just hope that you honor the fact that people are asking you to make sure you change legally, whatever terminology it is, not based off of somebody's decision or comment or protocol of another case, um, and that you make the change for our county. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Or do you have anything else? I, I don't. Okay. Any other questions? Sheriff, any other questions for either gentleman? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody want, want to make any comments before the commissioner's talk? Yes, Tom. Um, yes, please come up. Tom Adams, William Support. Uh, remind us, we're founded as a covenant nation. This is nothing new under the sun with God. Um, the founding era, uh, and even before in the colonial times, they had trouble with Indians, people coming from different parts of the of York that didn't understand each other. Uh, and that always creates some friction. friction. Um, and we want to remember that uh, God makes the days of blessing, He also makes the days of adversity. And I think that some of that's for testing. And we're under a lot of testing right now in our country. And there are a lot of a lot of the reports that we hear. There's a lot of truth, but there's a lot of fiction too. Um, we don't want to fall into the trap of just judging people by what they look like, what they have, because um, we have no idea where they're coming from. Until you have real hard evidence, real hard proof, you really shouldn't say anything. We have to be as welcoming as we can be to bring people to a place where. Um, they can either trust us or they'll realize that uh, maybe this isn't the area for them because we're going to be on our guard, but we still need to be welcoming. And um, God won't bless us. And a lot of people here want to say we trust in God, and God we trust, and we want to have his ways. But I think if we fall in this line of arrogance that we're Americans and... Um, yeah, we don't want the illegals. We don't want the trouble. And, you know, I'm not going to argue that whole thing because I'm with you on all that. But uh, when, when we want to have a closed mindset because someone's at a certain age, I mean, just can't imagine the uncomfortableness that could make a lot of people feel. And this is going to create friction in our community, but also people outside the community. If they hear about these things, it's going to create friction. And this is the, this is the charge I hate, is that people, you know, Republicans, or uh, for lack, lack of better, for, or conservatives are racists. I don't know people who are, at least the, that I hang with, and but we have to be real careful that image doesn't get put on us, because that's the worst image you want to have. Uh, we don't want to be judging people. I know a lot of people, and when Mark brought up white people, I saw a lot of white people tra panhandling, and you don't even know where they're coming from. I mean, you could have white people coming from Europe who hate this country and want them to do us harm. You have no idea who they are. So, and, and there's people who hate this country that have been living here their whole lives because they're spoiled brats and don't understand what freedom's about, don't understand what the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence are about. They're godly documents. We have to behave like godly Christians, not as fools, but as wise. We have to seek the Lord, not our own devices, and work together. And um, we can't depend on just law enforcement, because they're, they're people too. They have their lives to live, their, their private lives, 
And so we have to band together as a community, work together, and not depend on just one or two uh, agencies to protect us. We all have to do that. So if you see something wrong, you, you join with your neighbors and you get people who are interested, you try to get them interested in it, and, and contact the agencies too so they can be involved. We can't do it on our own. And this, is, this was the idea of the, the militias when the country was founded. Um, at, at that time, they didn't even have an army. But the militia units were community organizations and they cared about their community, just like our volunteer fire departments. This is the type we have to understand what freedom is about. And it starts with us, and it, and it starts with us to acknowledge God first and, and not to walk in arrogance, because the arrogant, he'll destroy. Um, in Malachi 3.14, he says it is... It is vain to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinances and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts? These were people questioning them. You know, because they weren't getting what they wanted, they weren't, uh, they weren't truly serving God, and they decided to uh, you know, question God. Why, why, are we, uh, why are we serving them? We're not getting what we want now. So we can't have that attitude. God's testing us, and we have to, we have to come through this test and it's up to God if, if we get to uh, have victory or not. But the true victory we have is remaining faithful to righteousness and holiness and doing what's right. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. So, we all know this is an extremely serious matter. We acknowledge that. We've seen how the federal government has put their, their heads in the sand. We're not sticking our heads in the sand in Lancome County. Anytime people have brought this matter to our attention, we've addressed it. We addressed it when the ICE Center was opened. We went toward it. Commissioners, the state representatives. We've reported back to you on the status of the, of the ICE Processing Center. When this hit the news last week, we, we addressed it right away. You see, we, we have the sheriff here, we have the warden here. We're not going to ignore this. We have employers that bring people to our county to do jobs. We put things out for bid, and they bring people to our county that might look different. And we welcome them as long as they're legal. They're doing work. They're doing the work that we need to have done. They break the law and we'll deal with it. If they're here illegally and you can prove it, bring it to our attention and we'll turn it over to law enforcement, whether it's local, state, or federal, and we'll address it. We're not gonna ignore it. But what's not healthy in this county is spreading rumors, which is very easy to do on social media, and it's not healthy. We have a developer east that wants to do some amazing things in our county. Some amazing things that we only know the tip of it, but we can't say. That would be transformational for this county. Yet they're accused constantly they're going to bring illegal housing here. That's wrong. It's wrong. It's not healthy. You're a business owner, such as the one motel down in Little Sock. And I spoke to him on Sunday. He says, you can call him. I have no contract with ICE. I don't put ICE people here. It's a bunch of nonsense, he said. That is not healthy for our community. It's not welcoming for our community. If you have concerns, Call us. We're not going to stick our head in the sand. We are not a sanctuary county, nor do we want to be a sanctuary county. We'll address the play on words and the terminology by the authority that should do so, which is the prison board. And the prison board will address that. And we'll back, report back to the, on, to the public once those decisions are made, which will be in the very near future. My colleagues, anything they want to say? 
Yeah, I, I would add to what the Commissioner Metzger is saying. Um, I, I, I sit on the prison board as well. I will do everything in, in my power to get this thing, the wording done correctly. Um, the conversations have been had with the warden, with the sheriff, and they've done an excellent job finding out what we need to do to address it and get our name off the list. So I will do everything in my power here in Lycoming County to get Lycoming County off that list. We can't control the source. We have no control of that. But we can control what goes on in our own community. And the three of us will continue to fight for our community. I think we have a, a new DA, whether, whether you like the guy or don't like the guy, that's going to be very hard on crime, which I think also helps our community. If people know they can't come here and get away with the crime, they'll stop coming. So that's another integral part that we do have a good team player who is fighting for like Cumming County. Um, but bottom line that we also have to remember, you know, so I, I, I was 14 years at Loyal Sock Township. Trust me, we looked at the Econ Lodge all the time. So for the people that are concerned about the Econ Lodge, it was looked at. The Econ Lodge is a, is a uh, blue collar workers hotel, motel within our community. Um, they're paying to be there. It's not being paid for by ICE. These people are paying individually to be there. Um, and they're workers. And they may have different, you know, languages and looks, but they're here working in our community. I live in my neighborhood. I have, I have Asians that live on either side of me. They're great people that have businesses in our community. So we're, we're always going to see that. And I understand everybody's concerns, but... What I, what I would ask, kind of as, as Commissioner Metzger has asked, um, is you, you got to put some of that aside and realize that some people are here working, some people are here legit, and, and give us the faith in, in the three of us as, as your new commissioner sitting here that we're going to control the rest of it and stop anything illegal from happening within our county. Thank you. For, and I appreciate the amount of people that came out today because it is a, it's a major topic. Um, but we will work on it. We'll, and, you know, government works slower. You know, we all have to learn that. So, unfortunately, we have a prison meeting tomorrow morning, but we can't get that on the agenda and get that verbiage correct. So it'll take till the following meeting till we can get it fixed. But we will get it fixed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Got it. I would just like to say I I agree earlier with someone's statement that the the issue of the southern border will continue to spread north. Um, I, I don't. I don't think anyone disagrees with that. And and uh, immigration uh, or the the issue at the southern border may be the the great challenge of our time as a nation. Um, but locally, right now, it is not. We had a 15 year old kid shot in a parking lot on the Golden Strip the other day. It was not by an illegal. It was not. It we we don't. No, we suspect it wasn't even someone from outside of Pennsylvania. It may have been people from the county. Um, I live here. I've lived, I was born and raised here. I don't walk around the area and see a great change in demographic. Um, if there were planes coming in, everyone has a camera and a video recorder in their phone. If there were planes coming in every night, there'd be videos of them. If there were, if, if there were 50 illegals in the Econo Lodge, there would be videos. It's just, I, 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 the biggest issue in Lycoming County right now for our safety is not illegal immigrants coming across the Mexican border. The biggest issue for our safety in Lycoming County is, as the DA sat here the other day, it is the drug violence, it is the gang violence. And there, I, am, I am surprised that this, because we're on a website, and we're a sanctuary city because according, why, what makes it? According to a website that we're listed, we're on the news, so everyone goes nuts. There's, there's been more outrage in our office this week over our, like Cumming County being listed as a sanctuary city on some website than, than there was that the 15 year old kid got shot in Friday's parking lot. We have fielded more calls about the sanctuary city than the murder. And that's, I'm just surprised. I'm surprised that that's where our, and you say it's not a racial issue? Okay. I, I, okay. It seems to be one to me, but it's, wh where is the real danger? Where is the clear and present danger? 
I, I, I don't walk down the street and see the illegals. I'm out and about every day. I don't see it. Um, but you don't have to go very far to see the, the gang violence and the issues. And when you talk to people who are with children and youth, and you talk to people who are in law enforcement, they'll tell you. They'll tell you it's an issue. And it was an issue before Saturday night. And then Sunday night with the retaliatory shots that fortunately were unsuccessful. Um, so that's, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I, I, I do not um, ignore the issue. Like I said, the, the immigration issue at the southern border, I think, is the great challenge of our time because there's no easy answer. But the greatest challenge of like coming county in 2024 is not that. We have bigger fish to fry. That's my thing. So I'll leave you with this. A sanctuary county or city is a municipality that limits or denies its cooperation with the national government and enforcing immigration law. We're not denying that. We do a system. Also, a city's council, mayor, Municipality, commissioners will usually declare itself a sanctuary county or city and subsequently enact measures and policies that are welcome and favorable to illegal migrants. We haven't done that, nor are we going to do that. I spoke several times, I think at least two or three times, I know at least twice in the past about the issue at the southern border when I was on the previous board of commissioners. Mr. Stout did an article on it. I spoke about the fentanyl. We have that problem here. We have the drug problem here. We have the guns here. It's coming into Lycoming County. It's been coming into Lycoming County for years. It's going across the entire country. When you have 300 people die per day, 300 Americans die per day from fentanyl poisoning, that's, a, that's something that the government has ignored. Has ignored. If you had to put 300 people on a plane and that plane crashed every single day, I guarantee you the airlines would be shut down until they figured out what was going on. And that's what they're doing. They're crashing 300 people a day and killing them and ignoring them because the source of it is coming into the southern border, the majority of it. So we do take it serious and we'll address it. We want everybody to be vigilant, but be loving to your neighbor. Ask them, get to know them. Find out where they're working. They'll be welcoming at the same time if you see something wrong, report it. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna move on to the rest of the commission meeting at this time. Uh, at this time, we'll recess the commissioner's public meeting for the salary board and convene the salary board. Uh, salary board seeking your approval of the salary board minutes of the previous meeting, February 29, 2024. I'll make a motion. I'll second. On favor side? Aye. Aye. Next. Salary board seeking your approval of the salary board actions as outlined in attachment A. I will go through each of them individually. Seeking your approval on the request or correct, request uh, in the information services oh, yeah, it is uh, to approve compensation of IT operations director above the maximum of the pay scale retroactively effective to 3 March 2024. You want us to make individual motions? I'll make a motion. Second. I'm second. No, second. On favor, say aye. 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 Uh, in the register and recorder's office, request to add a full-time temporary clerk three position effective 17 March 2020. A motion? No, but Dave 
Dave is here, so he can. Oh yes. He, he can yes. be part of the vote. Okay. Okay. Good. So. Uh, Dave, you. would you like to come up, please? Sure. Speak at the podium. This pertains to your office. I didn't see you hide back in the corner. I apologize. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> okay. I have a few notes here. I'm happy to, to have the opportunity this morning uh, to, to talk about this issue. I certainly look forward to, to working uh, with the new board and with everyone, uh, the public, uh, everyone in the county, um, moving forward. Now, please keep in mind that, you know, in the Register and Recorder's Office, we are record keepers. And what does that really mean? Well, when you go there, you have records that you can access, and we all know that. But what we don't know, really, uh, most people don't realize what it takes to get a record in place. And that's what I'm talking about today with this position. We, this office over the years, has gotten behind due to uh, a lack of manpower uh, in being able to get records into the system to make them available for the public, for everybody to see. So, and, and um, I'll cite some examples here. Uh, I do have, and I, I didn't mean to neglect, uh, Kimber here, who is a uh, deputy in the office. Kimber has some very nice historical perspectives. She's been with the county for almost 20 years. And Ashley just is also here, but she had to take a call just a few minutes ago. Uh, but I hope she comes back before the end of this. Okay, and... You know, I, one thing, I, another thing I want to say is all, all these decisions, I, I think, we, we always have to take uh, into consideration the cost. I mean, that's very important. My fiduciary responsibility is to help control the cost in my department. And I take that very seriously, I think, and here comes Ashley. Uh, and. I think everybody is aware of that because um, I know Kimber and Ashley are just the other day we went to order some some files and I said to Ashley let's make sure that we order the plain files because the colored files are more expensive I mean it's little things like that it may sound like a small thing but you always have to step back and think about the cost because this is about the taxpayer, and, and we want to make it, um, we want to be fiscally responsible at every opportunity. Uh, but this is a need because over time we haven't kept up with getting these files into the system. And also, please keep in mind, we are a, in the Register and Recorder's Office, uh, a revenue producer. It's not uncommon to produce over a million dollars a year in revenue for the county. So that's another factor to take into consideration because we're making money in that department. Uh, and let me start off by, you know, I, I want to apologize to the rest of the board for the misunderstanding uh, when we got together in a meeting recently and it was recommended this temp position was recommended for consideration. And I thought initially that we were talking about the continued outside agency status that this person has that we're talking about. And my comments at the time were related to that. So I apologize for, for that misunderstanding, at least initially, until we got to the end of the meeting. And, you know, in, in addition to the uh, the agenda uh, that I was expecting that was uh, we had an unexpected twist to it 
And and so what about considering this person as a temporary for the work that needs to be done? Well, you know, philosophically, I think all positions are temporary because if they're not needed, we shouldn't have them. So I appreciate the, the use of the word temporary from that standpoint. Of course, there are other concerns about a temporary label, but I think in this case, because of what we're trying to do to get caught up, we are so far behind that perhaps temporary is appropriate. Uh, and we, we did put a, a two year uh, limitation on it. And I think within that two years, there's a good possibility we'll have some retirements and then you know, we, we may not have to replace the person that retires. But, and, and I don't mean to go on and on, I guess I am, but, uh, you know, Kimber and Ashley have some historical perspective. They know that, for example, we have several drawers of these rolls that need to be cut and put on sheets like this for the convenience of the public. That is just one thing that has not been done for a long time. We have at least, now our, the person that's being considered for this position has done an excellent job as, as a temporary through an agency. She's been able to get through three full drawers of estates to scan into the system. But guess what? We have another 12 drawers to go through. So that is a, a lot more work that you know has, has not been done for a long time. And we have old adoptions that need scanned in for the benefit of the public. That hasn't been done for a long time. I, I have on my phone, and I won't take the time to do it, um, a picture of an entire wall of boxes that they all need to be proved. It, it's going to take days and days to be able to do that. Um, not to mention the fact that we have a renovation taking place in the basement. And it's going to take a lot of work to be able to reorganize the files in that area. So we need somebody to help with that. And, and at this point, you know, I won't, there are other things, of course, with the general filing could be considered a full-time job. Kimber does about four estates a day. That all has to be scanned into the system. Uh, it's just, it gets to be overwhelming. And uh, honestly, I wouldn't be wanting to spend this money if I didn't think it was necessary. But we are so far behind with this. And it, re it does require somebody with this type of temperament, the person that we're considering, to be able to do the job. These types of individuals, you know, when you find them, you have to keep them. Because it's, it's not a glamorous job, it's not an easy job to keep up with files and so on and so on. So, uh, at, at this point, uh, I would ask Kimber and Ashley, would you want to just give your view on on how necessary you think this position is. Hello. Hello. Um, the, the position itself is necessary. Um, we get close to a year lately, um, close to 800 files. Oops, sorry. Close to 800 files, which is states and um, that's where people have passed away. They come in and file things. And throughout the year, like the, right now we're working on 2023, a lot of stuff's coming in for these files. So there's a lot of filing and receiving in that aspect. And like Dave said, there is a lot of back scanning. We're supposed to be 10 years <coughs> behind and we're more like, 2012. Right now. She, she's on 2012. Okay. So right, and it still needs proof. Everything I do that I scan in needs proof. 
we just don't have the staff at the moment to keep up with it. So we are falling behind on it. And we have boxes and boxes. So and I have a question for Mr. Huffman. Yeah, and uh, just to finish that thought, yeah. please, uh, if you may indulge me for a second. Uh, go back to 2018 when there was a a hiring freeze at that time. And it's two two people were let go, and, and there was there was some we not have, promised, to, but they were going to be replaced, and they never were. Right. Um, when the marriage clerk left, Dartha took on that responsibility, and that lady was never replaced. So we are down technically one okay. person. Okay. Thank you. So. Mr. Huffman, we had an individual before that was a temp that was then added on in your office as a full-time employee who currently works in your office. That's correct. Th that is correct. Okay. Department. We are now addressing this backlog. Previous board addressed the backlog by hi by hiring this person to a temp agency. Okay, so the person's over there. They're doing the work. Now what you're requesting is that we add them on as a full-time temporary position, which would add benefits. Okay, so the person's still there, they're being paid, but now what you're asking the county to do is incur the expense of benefits. When the person's still there working. So it's not like we're hiring another person because you're backlog. We have a person who's been there doing the work, doing a great job, and what your request is to us is now, I want to add them on, as a full-time, part-time, or full-time temporary position, we'd review it in two years, but they would get paid benefits at that time. Is that correct? Correct. That's okay. pretty That's much consistent okay. with what we All right. Had That's what I wanted to clarify. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. And uh, now, do we want to mention, Dan, about the... Okay. Dan's just as busy as his other job. Yeah. He's doing a great job too. So yeah, and right, you know, but he was he was a temp that was eventually hired all right. the whole time. So we are addressing the needs in the office. It's not like we're not addressing them. He was additionally doing the scanning. Right. But then our guardianship work has increased. There's a lot right. more to that now. Right. There's a lot more has, complexity. Put doing that work. So, so that, to them. So this, this I don't mean to interrupt you. Right. Okay. So this <laughs> request was initially brought to us at budget time back in September. And was denied by the previous board of commissioners that it would continue on as a contract with the temp agency as long as you were meeting the need of having the work done we we're going to continue the contract with the temp agency plus i understand there's a buyout with the temp agency correct there is so we would have to buy that money out and then add the person on full time so we would be buying the contract out plus include including uh, benefits now so it'd be an additional cost to the county no, and, and again, I, I don't remember the exact details going going back to discussions that we had. All I know is that it, it had been determined, as, as time goes on, I think it becomes more and more apparent, uh, more apparent today than it was back in budget season in September. Guardianships have become much more complex. And uh, some of it is, is just because of what we see in our society that is not unrelated to the discussion we had earlier. Well, we have a person right now doing the work. Well, we do, but right. it's, we, it, it is that person that does, that's part of the orphan's court, uh, you know, it's, it's become a more complex job is what I'm saying. So Dan has taken on the responsibility of being that person's assistant in addition to helping them out with responsibilities that have become much more uh, overwhelming, and and so we we track and monitor it closely. I mean, he's he's just part time over there, and he sometimes gets behind with the other stuff. We're, we're not talking, talking about that. We're talking yeah. about this position. <coughs> well, this position too is yeah. I, I'm, okay. I think we are the three of us agree that. Okay. It's. Do we have any questions from these two commissioners? Then we're going to move on to a vote. Um. I mean, I don't really have a question. The, 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 the issue comes to, yes, right now she is, the, the person that is there is hired as a temp. Um, she's through a temp agency. Um, oh, should we make the motion first? Yeah, let's make the motion. 
Uh, do we have a motion for uh, the request to add a full-time temporary clerk three position? Is there a motion? I'm supposed to. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion. Go ahead. Oh, uh, the issue is in, in the climate of the world today. Um, I don't know your your job. I don't. I don't know the. I mean, I know what you do, but I don't. I'm, I don't know the the daily grind of it. I know that it's an important job for the county. Um, because as you said, the records are vital. Um, you not just keep uh, deeds and estates, but you do marriage license and adoptions and like it is. It's crucial, um, and it's not sexy. It's not a sexy, you know, job. It's it's a lot of paperwork, and and um, we got way behind throughout history, uh, a little because of COVID, but even before that with the scanning, and we are behind probably because you're understaffed, would be my guess. Um, and now that the world just gets more complex, you know, I was in real estate and there's more and more paperwork. It's, it's not less paperwork, it's more paperwork. Um, so we, we have someone now who, is, um, who likes the job, who's good at the job, and we know in the world today, fire, finding good employees and keeping, retaining good employees is hard, even at the county level with the benefits that we attract because you can walk into any place and get jobs and get signing bonuses and, and get all that. So. Um, in my opinion, from the county, since we have someone here that's good, that likes it, that fits with the team, that the, the boss likes and the coworkers like, um, I think it would be foolish of us not to add this temporary position, understanding that in within two years she can probably get promoted and, and when someone retires and when a job opening comes open. Um, I understand that, uh, just to clarify, Yes, if we if we do pro sign her full time, we have to buy out um, her temp agency. There's a five thousand dollar price tag or something like that. But if she goes anywhere in the county to any of our five hundred jobs in the county, we still have to buy her out. So if she goes to the prison, if she goes, we have openings. And if she goes somewhere else, so we have to buy that out. So then, if we fill it with another temp, and that other temp leaves, we could end up with two or three buyouts in one year. So as we look at it, like oh, five thousand, well. The next temp that comes in, once they apply for another job, we could we could end up with multiple buyouts. So it just it seems to me that when you in any business and and you know the county is a, is a government, but it is a, we it's run the business of the county. In any business, when you have a good employee um, and they're not being unreasonable, you want to do what you can to keep that good employee, especially in 2024 when the workforce it, when finding good employees is tough and um, you know you ask people in private industry I have a friend who's a big wig at FedEx and he said 20 years ago we put out an application for a driver or a, a opening for a driver we get 50 applicants he was now we have trouble getting any good applicants and that's just the society that we live in and we have one um, she's good she knows the job she likes it they like her I, I, I think it would be foolish to risk letting her because if, if I'm her parent and she's just a temp, and she can get a full-time job anywhere with benefits, I would tell her she's crazy not to leave. And to think that she's going to stay at the county long-term when we won't give her even a temporary commitment, I, I think is foolish. Thank you. Commissioner? Uh, yeah, so um, I'm probably going to do, disagree with a lot of that. But what I look at right now is that the previous board approved a temporary position and we hired this temporary position through an agency. We are now connected to that agency. We're willing to continue with that agency, and it doesn't ad add any additional cost to the county. And as Commissioner Metzger said, those costs are health care, retirement, and other benefits. They last forever. Um, I've watched this county grow over the last 10 years. Every time you add an employee, that employee seems to stay. Now today you'll, you'll see where we are removing several employees from our TDA to save the taxpayers money. So as we're looking at doing things like that, then on the flip side we're going to add an employee. Um, I appreciate uh, Mr. Huffman's comments about trying to save money in the county, um, possibly buying uncolored file folders, but at a cost of almost $6,000 to bring this employee from a temp agency to work for the county we can't buy enough file folders to save $6,000. So it would be my opinion that we would leave this position 
in the hands of a temporary agency, which is what was designed by the previous board. It gets the job done, and then that department can move on. If there's something different that would like to be done during budget times, it can always be looked at at that point. Um, my other concern is, and I, and I appreciate what Commissioner Messina is saying, it's, it's difficult to get good employees, but I will make a comment that I, th I think we as a team at this county did a great job in hiring new people in our HR department that are going to lead us in a whole different direction. Um, and they're very qualified people that, yes, we did find, and we found them at the price that we wanted to pay, and we didn't pay them any type of fee to get them on board with us. Um, so even if we were to make this position a full-time temporary clerk three position within the county, I would recommend that it was not the employee who works for the temporary agency and pay that fee. That's all I have to say about it. Thank you. Um, when I look at a position, I look at what the position is needed for that department, not the person filling the position. There's no debate here the que uh, our question that this employee is an excellent employee, has done a phenomenal job, and we compliment her on that. She could find a different position outside the county or inside the county tomorrow. We don't know that. She may look and she might find something different. And. Um, that type of personality who's very motivated, such as she, I would probably expect that of her because of how excellent of an employee she is. She wants to grow. However, when we look at the position and not the employee, and I understand the commissioners, um, um, you've seen his comments about it's hard to find good employees, I understand that. But I can't base my decision based on a person. I have to base it on the need of the department because ultimately the taxpayers are paying for that need. The last board addressed that need by making it a temporary position. I'm in favor of continuing it down that road and, and doing so because uh, the cost of the buyout plus the cost of the benefits, uh, we're eliminating positions that aren't needed. We're trying to cut down our TDA because it affects the retirement. It affects the workman's comp. It affects our insurance because they base it on the total number. So we're going to eliminate some and then start to grow again. And government has to stop growing. It has to stop growing and has to start getting smaller. And, uh, and this is one way that we can get the job done effectively and at the same time keep the cost down. Um, so I would take the position and continue it as a temporary position at this time. In the, in the, I, I don't, in the place that government needs to get smaller, but there's places societally where, where society is demanding the government not get smaller. For example, we just hired five new sheriff's deputies. That's public safety. I get it. I get it. But it was there's a reason we're doing it now, and we didn't do it 30 years ago because society's reflecting that we need it now for public safety. Right. Their job and the paperwork that is with their job is different than it was in the past. And to say, I want to... Yes, it's easy to say I want government to get smaller, but the requirements of their job is not allowing government to get smaller. It's almost demanding that government get bigger to keep up with the, with the workload and the paperwork. But the, but the position is not being denied. It's just being paid for by the temp agency. But the, the next step has to be when she... It's easy to look at how much it costs to buy out her contract. What's abstract is how much does it cost us when she leaves, and now we have to train someone else to do the job, and that person that we train might not like it, and then they leave, and then we have, you know, it's the whole bird in the hand. We have a bird in the hand, and there is a, to say that just, if she leaves, there's no added cost, there's absolutely an added cost, because it's gonna add work stress, Someone else might leave because now their workload is doubled because they brought in someone new who doesn't know what they're doing. It's, it's, more, it's harder to put a dollar figure on it, but you know and I know in any business, turnover costs the business money. And, and there will be a cost if this girl leaves. Correct, but she's still in a temporary status, so if she doesn't appreciate the temporary status she's in, she's not going to appreciate the temporary status that she gets moved to. You do, don't speak for her. You don't know that. You've never talked to her. Explain it to her. Explain that she now has benefits, that she now is working towards retirement, and within the next two years she could get promoted. 
But you can't say what she would like and what she wouldn't like. That's not fair. And our responsibility is a fiduciary responsibility of this county. And if, by making sure that the position's there to do the job, we're doing so. We're just not adding the cost to the taxpayer of the benefits. And we wish, we wish her, we hope she stays and maybe the position will open within the department. She can slide over. Dave's anticipating some retirements. She can always slide over. But we're not denying him the position. We're just saying that we don't want to pay the cost of benefits at this time because we don't feel that that's the direction to go in. At least that's my vote. And my understanding, back to the growing government or not growing government, that position is a position that was created to get filing caught up. And the minute the filing was caught up, the position goes away. So to make it a, a full-time county position doesn't follow that status. And that this position needs to go away when the filing is caught up. Okay, so we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Denied three to two. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Can I make a, a brief comment? Yes, and we will be putting it on a future agenda to okay. keep it as a temporary position and vote on that. All right, thank you for the consideration. Yes. And I would like to say it is my intention to extend this another three months through the agency and then two months from now come back yeah. and have it on the agenda. That's fine. And at that time, you know, we'll have, I, I believe, an impressive update for you. Okay. That, uh, and just one last comment, because I know I went on longer than I really wanted to, <clears throat> but it is to get caught up primarily. But I think both Kimber and Ashley, with their historical perspective on this more than what I have, can attest to the fact that this could easily be a full-time position with all the record-keeping and tracking that this office is responsible for. Thank you. Okay. We thank you. Thank um, your staff that's here today for their work, and uh, they do a great job over there. We appreciate all your hard work, and if you'll pass on to the rest of your staff the same. We will, yeah. and I thank you for that comment Absolutely. because they are a great staff. We and totally I believe that. And, and I want to take the opportunity to thank both of these ladies for, for what they do and for the support. Thank, thank you, Kimber. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Kimber. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay, next, domestic relations. Okay. Um, request to remove the following position from the TPA. Clerk 3, effective 17 March 2024. I'll make the motion. Second. I'll second. All clear side. Aye. 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 Everybody carried. In purchasing, request to remove the following position from the TPA. Part time, part time administrative specialist, effective 17 March 2021. Motion. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All clear side. Aye. 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 In the sheriff's office, request to remove the following position from the TDA. Temporary sheriff of special projects, uh, effective 17 March 2021. Motion. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All your side. Aye. In the district attorney's office, request to remove the following position from the TDA. Clerk 1, effective 17 March 2021. Motion. I'll make the motion. Second. All your side. Aye. Aye. Wait, wait. Are we not doing the second position there tonight? There were two in the under district attorney. Oh, Sorry. Miss Allen. Um, just read it then as yeah. long as they both as amended yeah Tem additionally uh, in the district attorney's office temporary county detective effective 17 March 2020 I'll make a motion I'll second all this side aye and finally, in information services, request to remove the following position from the TDA, Clerk 3, effect 17 March 2021. Motion. I'll make the motion. A second. All clear. Aye. 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 So um, I spoke to the report from Sun Gazette last week about how we consolidated two departments, and um, we're also able to uh, rebrand. Um, 
the IT department, and uh, two people were uh, received promotions, and um, we eliminated a position over there. We lit, eliminated a position in the new, the new department office of financial management. And the question was asked by the reporter, is this something you're looking at eliminating further positions? And you see here today, we've uh, eliminated six more that we spoke to the department heads that weren't needed. By taking this off the TDA, it helps reduce the overall retirement, the workman's comp, and the insurance, because they base it on an estimate on the total number of positions held within the county. Even though if they're not filled, they base that on that. So that's an answer to your question, Pat. We're doing it, you can see it this morning, we've done six more. So thank you. Can I ask? Question. By taking one off, it lowers what he had said. Yeah. Do we have a guess? Like, is no. it, do we lower? Is it a hundred dollars? Is no, it a thousand dollars? So it, our retirement, um, the county portion, is based off of your three highest salaries, your years of service, and your age. I could never give you a solid number because it would depend on each person. But the, what we're removing are empty positions, right? Yes, that could be potentially filled. Yes, correct. Yes. But but it's saving us money taking away an empty position. It is. Because they base it on the estimate. But we just don't know how much. No. Okay. But would it be fair? Would it be fair to say it would be thousands over the course of it? Oh, for sure. Yes. Right. Yes. It changes the actual. Yes. Yeah. Computation relative to your contribution. Six well, thousands of dollars. Numbers, those numbers are based on that specific amount. Yes. So we just saved, like. I, I would never give you a number to be held accountable. But we just saved we for in twenty twenty four. We just saved thousands of dollars. And that's over the lifespan of right. the fund as well, because we. So going on forever, we've saved yes. thousands. But in 2024, we've saved a hundred dollars. More than a hundred. Okay. Okay. Why pay something based on an estimate when it's not actual? No, no, no. I understand that. I just, you know, I just when we say, oh, we just saved the county money. It's wasted money. I just want to know did, did, how much money did we save? Is it? Are we patting ourselves on the back because we just saved a hundred dollars? Or did we do, was that significant? That's what I'm asking, because. It's significant, yes. yes. Okay. I would say we're patting ourselves on the back that we reduce six additional jobs that existed in the county. Plus two last week. They grew from 350 to 600 in a 10 year span. So that's eight, two weeks. Oh no, I get that. It's, I'm just asking how much did we save? That's what I'm asking first. Okay, we will uh, recess the uh, salary report this time. We can meet in public meeting. Move on to the personnel, personnel actions. Commissioner seeking your approval on the following personnel actions as conditional offers of employment subject to successful completion of the background check and all other employment conditions as outlined in the constraint date. In the Department of Public Safety, Jacob Wentz, Emergency Management Specialist, Operations Training, Full-Time Replacement, $40,399.45 per year, 75 hours per pay period, anticipated start date March 25, 2024. In Financial Management. I'm not sure if it's Shannon or Shanine, I'm not sure. I'm going to go no. with Shanine. Yeah, Shanine. It has to be Shanine. Uh, Edmonds Financial Support Specialist, full-time replacement, $20.97 per hour, 75 hours per pay period, anticipated start date, March 18, 2024. And in the Commissioner's Office, uh, Roxana Morphis, Morphis uh, Administrative Coordinator, full-time replacement, $36,523.50 per year, 75 hours per pay period, anticipated start date. March 18, 2020. Okay, got a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion. I'll second. All for your side. Aye. Aye. All right, moving to action items. 6.1 
Can I do 6.2 first? Just no. No. Yeah. Yes, you may. Ryan has to leave. I'd say good morning, but we just officially hit afternoon. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, 6.2, vote to approve agreement of sale for the purchase of vacant land located at 110, um, 110 Hill Alley, Jersey Shore, in the amount of $225,000. Um, this is to assist with our efforts in trying to relocate NDJ Dieter's location. And uh, I don't know if you want Brian up here to talk more from the broker side about what this property is, but it's contingent upon us getting a zoning first, the subdivision, and then of course the appraisal. Brian, anything you want to add? Um, no, it's in the early stages. You want to come up? Yeah. In the early stages, um, requiring subdivision approval. Excuse your name. Brian Gerio, broker with Real Estate Excel. Um, Surveyor, I think, has been to the property, so they're in the early stages of that subdivision approval. But uh, when it's when it's approved, it should be about 1.25 acres of uh, vacant commercial land. Great. So we uh, looking for a new home for District Justice uh, Deer, and we we're supposed to be um, pursuing the public safety building up in Jersey Shore, which uh, we're we're still very big supporters of. However, that's been uh, delayed. Uh, due to the delay, uh, we felt it was necessary to move out from that and take the magistrate court out of that building, the district justice out of that building, and, and pursue looking for land elsewhere. Uh, we believe we can have this project done in 12 to 18 months and, and have her at, at a new home, um, which is sorely needed. Uh, so that's the reason why we pursued this. And I think our anticipated closing date is the end of May, hopefully, if yes. all goes as well. So long as the subdivision is yeah. moves forward smoothly. Great, thank you. Great. So I have a motion. Did I make the motion already? Right. Oh, I'll make the motion. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Brian. No um, the first item I had then was vote to approve the intergovernmental agreements with River Valley Transit Authority. It's the amount of hundred thousand dollars. This is our continual um, partnership that we do with RVT to assist with the transportation services that they provide throughout the county. Um, and they also assist us with providing transportation to our MDJs. Okay, what funds have been taken out? Um, I don't know, so I have to ask you that because okay. it, uh, historically we've taken out of Act 13, so I didn't know if that's what you wanted to continue yeah. to do. Okay. We'll discuss that. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we have our first, we usually pay our first payment here at the end of June. So Maya, real quick on that, the, mm -hmm. how long have we been doing that? Because obviously Act 13 monies have not been around for Correct. much more than 10 it's, years. Yeah, we started um, using Act 13. We usually had it just budgeted as part of our overall operating budget. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then once those monies came available, we used that to, to free up the operation. Right, right. okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. does, does the word intergovernmental mean with Williamsport City? Is that? No, RBT. Good luck coming down and planning. Uh, commissioners, this uh, request here is just a uh, line item move. We're taking $103 from one line item in our EPWP and moving it to another line item to adjust for some costs. It's not adding any additional money or taking any, any money out of the already approved budget. Wait, how much money? $103. Oh, yeah. You just sit here for two hours for $103 approved. Yes. <laughs> I'll, that money. I'll, it. I'll make the motion. No, I'll second. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Commissioner. The best two hours of your day, wasn't it? <laughs> Dedication, <laughs> exactly. Good six floor, Malayton. Good afternoon. Seeking your approval for agreement with the City of Williamsport in the amount of $20,000 through the Act 13 funds for the Banshell Restoration Project. Expected completion is by spring 2025. Okay, the City of Williamsport came to us. What, how long ago was this completion? About a few months ago. Uh, but initially, they, they came to us quite a while ago. Yes, right? years ago. Years ago, yeah, you know, and they've come back to us and asked us. So these will be taken out of Act 13 funds. Okay. Do you know when they start? I said, MWE said completion. Do they, they may start, start 
within the next few months. Okay. Do we need a motion? I'll second. All fair side. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Okay. It carries two to one. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Six four nine, please. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon, Matt. Um, we're seeking your approval to upgrade UNDJ Dieter's internet and phone service. Um, they, um, with this contract, which is, they have budgeted in their, or in their budget for this year for their phones and their internet. Um, this would be $205 for the next 36 months. This would coincide with the, um, the contract that we have for all of our internet and um, phone services. Um, and this will save us about $181 a month um, versus their current contract. Yes. Okay. Motion? Uh, I'll make the motion. I'll second. All your side? Aye. 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 Carried. Thank you. Can I, will her move sure. make your job harder, easier, no different? Uh, it just, it's work. I mean, we'll move all our services and everything, but yeah. it's no worse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's just what we do. <laughs> Thank you. You do it well. Thank you. <laughs> Leslie, will you, will you be involved with like the design work for all that so that it's easier for your department to... We work very closely with Kenny and his okay. team and make sure that all data is there and network runs the way right. it's supposed to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Six, six, seven, Jason. Morning, Commissioner. Morning, Morning. Director. Uh, six, six, um, vote to approve the purchase and install of new stars and spacers on our GS3, Ford, 5 in the green machine, the amount of $109,502.38. This is a budgeted item for 2024. These are tip, um, a rubber star-shaped item that has the recycling materials filled out across. The heavies will drop down through them, and cardboard will be separated from these print magazines and so forth. So these is now 10 years old the system, so it's time to start getting some of the things replaced. Okay, a motion? Oh, I'll make the motion. I'll second. On the curbside? Aye. Aye. Thank you. 6-7 uh, is to approve the purchase and installation of a new roller steel door from overhead door company in the amount of $19,404. This is a, the door into our wash bay at the upper garage, and it's not been functional for a couple months, so we're trying to get that replaced, so it's part of our maintenance repair budget and stuff. Okay, motion. I'll make it. Second. All in favor, side. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. 6-8, Ken. Good morning, Ken. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, I have it for you today, um, three change orders. Um, the first one being of no charge. Um, what we're do doing is removing or not installing a kitchenette area, but in return they're removing some walls and changing and moving a fire board. Motion? I'll make it. I'll second. All here for side? Aye. Okay, uh, the next one is we are installing a kitchenette in room 315 that was not originally defined to be there, and this is for the cabinet work and um, the blocking in the wall, the drywall, that kind of stuff. What floor is room um, third floor of the build. On our third floor. Yeah, I'll make that motion. That's your kitchen. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. On the paper side? We'll let you use it, Commissioner. I won't use it much. That's plain. That's plain in the kitchen. I need a fridge. That's what I need. We're giving you our kitchen and we're we're getting a new little one. Yes, you are. Uh, the final one is um, we ran into some issues with the sprinkler lines that um, moved in um, the ductwork, the main return air for the, the entire building that had to be adjusted and, and made a little bigger um, in a different direction because of the um, sprinkler line was there. Is this change order number one? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Oh. Do you need to ask for the motion or can I just make it? Like I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor say aye. Aye. I'll abstain from this one. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Okay. Here's Shannon. The 
Jersey Shore uh, item is for the reimbur reimbursement of, to Jersey Shore's Tide Out and Valley Municipal Authority for emergency sewer repairs on their one of their sewer mains that collapsed um, near Ball Birds Brewing. Um, so it, the cost so far to do those repairs is in excess of, um, I think it's almost $300,000 at the time that they requested uh, help with the, these repairs. So this will be coming out of Act 13 funds. We had initially um, offered to give them $150,000 and then $150,000 in a loan, and they um, declined the loan and said that the $150,000 would be um, would help them out greatly, and that they appreciate our our um, assistance with their issue. Is there a separate water and sanitary authority in Jersey Shore? Is that part of No, oh, no, no, no. Um, the sewer is tied out in Valley Municipal Authority. Um, the water is a separate. I don't know if that's the borough or an authority, but that's separate from the sewer. And those are also uh, both separate from, from what you're okay. Not that it didn't, they vote on this before, did they? This came up before. I think we, we just had an emergency we meeting in regards to This happened over Christmas, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, it, it happened, it happened, I believe, on the 19th of December, mm -hmm. um, where, and they had to bring in uh, a lot of equipment and it kept growing in size. They had to actually bring in a, a larger contractor. They had to bring in pumps because this was, this in order to keep the businesses on that side of town going, and there's a right. pump station there, they had to bring in uh, heavy duty pumps in order to get, not have a, a sewer leak. I just thought this area. was already done. We've discussed it, and, and the repairs have, most of the repairs have been completed, but they had asked our, for our support in helping pay for okay. those repairs. Thank you. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Well, Aye. 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 Thanks, Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner seeking your approval on the reappointment of uh, the following individual to the Lycoming County Housing Authority, Brian Crooking, and the term would run through 1 January 2024 through 12 31 I'll make the motion. I'll second. Oops, sorry. Aye. 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 Do we know just how many people are on that? Probably um, We want to uh, extend our condolences and prayers to the family of Ed Ott, who uh, passed this past week. Uh, Mr. Ott was a Muncie native that played for the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. I uh, love this area and came back to this area and uh, was an, a fine gentleman who has always had time for kids and family and um, very congenial. You could approach him and have a nice conversation with him and they will be sorely missed. And we just want to express our uh, condolences to the, and uh, prayers to the Ott family. <coughs> Maybe? Uh, Commissioner Crooking, I'll make the motion. I would like to kind of just briefly clarify, you know, I, I, I voted no on the $20,000 worth of Act 13 money. Um, my, my reason for that is I think um, I'm concerned of the future of the Act 13 money, the future of the, the ARPA money. Uh, I'm waiting to get some budgetary dollars back, uh, which we should have shortly to know where, where our balances are. Uh, I think we, moving forward, I'm gonna be very cautious of where we spend that money. I like the idea of spending that money on building infrastructure for the county itself, such as this new uh, magistrate's office, and looking forward to doing things like that with the Act 13 money, uh, that we're not gonna continue to give to uh, people that request it, but I think we gotta be very cautious of where that money goes because that money's gonna come to an end fairly soon. So I just wanna clarify that. I had echo your comments. We have to be very diligent about how this money's are spent because eventually they will come to an end. Uh, like Coming County has been very smart how they've spent their Act 13 monies and we have to be cautious. There's, there's a lot of commitment commitments made so far uh, and those monies that are, that are in the fund right now so we have to see what the balance is and be very cautious moving forward. You're absolutely correct. Do you have anything? No. Uh, yeah, I just, th this doesn't really have much to do with anything, but um, in the in the local sports world, in the, in the high school wrestling world, this is the uh, 
this is the weekend of states at Hershey. And I know it's the first year that girls have been included there, but for, for I'm not a wrestler, I never was, I was a basketball guy, but for, for people in that world, um, this is the biggest weekend of their year. And uh, it's a special time for the kids. It's a special time for the parents. It's a heartbreaking time for the parents whose kids are seniors. So uh, if you know anyone who is in that, and a lot of wrestlers, especially the great ones, just wrestle. You know, a lot of kids play multiple sports, but these kids at Hershey, a lot of them, they wrestle all year round. So it's a, it's a special time for them. When you're a parent, it's a, it's a very bittersweet time, especially for the seniors who they, you know, they might never get to see their kid wrestle again. So. Uh, for those people in our community, and Pennsylvania wrestling is as good as any wrestling in the, in the country. Um, so this Hershey this weekend is a very special time to those people. And uh, so if you know people in that in that world, um, it's it, it's a great time and it's a tough time all at the same time. So um, just we want to wish all all our kids the best. And now that I'm a parent, I want to wish the parents the best because it's it's tough sitting in the crowd watching. It really is. Public comment. Ask you to please your com keep your comments to county issues and keep them brief. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Tom. You introduce yourself. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Tom Sheck from Muncie Township. Uh, I just wanted to draw your attention, and I guess Shannon left. She's probably already aware of this, but there are two pending bills um, in the legislature that are currently in the uh, <coughs> Housing and Community Development Subcommittees that were introduced by a gentleman by the name of Josh Siegel from Allentown and one of uh, Mr. Tariq Khan from the City of Philadelphia, um, and I'll reference House Bill 1975 that wishes to override, if passed, the ability of local zoning to permit the repurposing re, uh, of vacant office space as multifamily or other terms of housing to include apartments and condominiums. And I think the concern is here that it would usurp, if passed, uh, the abilities of our county planning department in the zoning partnership and for those municipalities to include the city of Williamsport we wouldn't have a say in how that uh, would be undertaken and that presents a problem for multiple fronts so that's House Bill 1975 there's a similar piece of legislation House Bill 1988 it would primarily affect the city um, and it would uh, when they want to revise the municipality's planning code to require cities, boroughs, and towns and townships of more than 5,000 residents to permit the use of duplex, triplex, and quadplex housing in areas currently zoned for only single-family dwellings. Uh, this would increase the number of multifamily uh, units available in the state. This is not unique to Pennsylvania. Maryland is trying the same thing as we speak, but I think it's important that we maintain uh, the integrity of what our zoning ordinances both countywide and municipals um, currently have in place and in talking to some folks in Harrisburg over the last couple days I think that uh, the Pennsylvania State Association of Township Supervisors the P Pennsylvania State Association of Boroughs and so forth are going to be in uh, significant opposition to this but I think the commissioners need to keep us on the radar I was Thank aware you. of that I spoke to uh, Representative Ham I did too yes yeah. who's adamantly opposed to it okay Thank you. That second HB bill. HB 1988, and introduced, uh, marked by the same two folks that I mentioned previously, okay. and thank it's still in committee. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Here, so while she's coming up, I have a dumb question. So places where they have a double house right now, is that zoned differently than just? If it's a duplex, no. It's it's probably zoned as a single family. That's what I say. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mark, I, I was uh, for. So at least what I'm used to, that was an allowed, so a, a double would be an allowed use Correct. in, like Lowell Sykes most restricted is R1, which is residential, single family, but it allows for a, a double unit. Okay, so each township but has a different usage. If you made it as usage. a duplex, then it would be a conditional use. Understood. Yeah. I understand. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean <laughs> That's okay. I figured this in the transition I would ask a question. Um, I'm coming here for I guess guidance on what to do. I, my name is Marsha Bergman. I'm a judge of elections for Woodbury Township. I live in Woodbury Township in West 4th Street. That's the extension. Okay, what I'm trying to do is get a petition for the 4th Street extension off of South 220 Highway for public and transportation safety in Linden, Woodbury Township, 
at the West 4th Street extension. Now, the 4th Street extension would benefit from, do you know what area I'm talking about? They got the dirt piled up there really high. And from what I understand, that's illegal because it's higher than 4th Street. I've been told that. Anyways, it, the benefit would be 100, over 100 residents in East Linden. They cannot get into their homes. They gotta go out of their way to get into their homes. They go through six stop signs to get back to their homes. And for me, I don't travel the highway as much. I go up 4th Street. Also, it would benefit Williamsport Ford, PBC Spas, High Steel, Jasper Industries, uh, Reynolds Ironworks, Dixon's A, A, C, and R, just to name a few on West 4th Street. Also, an exit would eliminate the truck traffic coming through Newberry during the school period when the buses are coming, transferring there at the Roosevelt Middle School. I mean, you have to slow down there as it is. Uh, for example, High Steel, they have uh, beans. When they bring them up to Williamsport, when they come from like from Williams, from the Torsville direction, how do you think they get them up there to 4th Street? Those beams are huge. They go up 15 and go up to Foy Avenue and jockey around and go back up on the highway, go to the 4th Street exit and jockey around and come up 4th Street. Wow. Now when they leave, they have a, if they're going south, they have no problem. They can just go right on the highway. And uh, it also would help the, the traffic, truck traffic at the end of 3rd Street. Any of you familiar with that area? That is a congested area. They go from the end of 3rd Street to Poplar Street to Trenton Avenue to get up to all those industries up there. And I've been there and I've seen it. And those trucks, I don't see how those truck drivers jockey those trucks around like they do. And also, it would also help the Wahoo Industry Park. There's a lot of industry in there, and there's a lot of tractor trailers involved in that. So what I'm proposing is, how do I go about proposing a petition to the state, or do you? I don't know. I'm, so I'm, do you have any recommendations for I think maybe, maybe bring us to your attention, and talk, and we can talk to Penda and, and help facilitate that. But that'd be the only way the gentleman of the petition. It's making the, the right contacts with the right people. The right. right. Because I was told to come here. <coughs> so let, let's connect you with uh, our trans trans transportation planners. Do you guys want copies no. of this? I'll make sure they do. That's okay. Right. Thank you. I think I have them for you. Your contact info. Pardon me? Do you have your contact info? Oh, mine. Right. While you're writing that down, I have had someone else who basically. Um, gave me the same spiel that you just had, especially with high steel and the comp the, yeah, the, the mean, difficulties. The logistical <laughs> difficulties and how much um, uh, a better access there could help the development of that end of the county. Um, and the businesses are already there. So that is you're not the only person I've heard say this. So it's uh, it's certainly something that we should look into. Uh like I said, I've lived there since 1979, right across from where I'm talking this proposal would be. And when you come down from the Lock Haven area, it's easy to get off of 4th Street. But when you come up through Williamsport, there's no place to get off. Everybody has to get off on 3rd Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really, it really rough. No, it's certainly something worth looking into. Yep. Well, I thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. Oops. Thank you for sitting here all morning. <laughs> <laughs> it was longer than I expected. Uh, Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. I mean, you're right for the school kids, as we're talking up here, for for the schools that are there too. It must. Yep. Yeah, because they, they bring those tractor yeah, trailers, be. not just high steel, but all those other trucks yeah. have to come up. They have to come up right up through there. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Catherine, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm step into Muncie, Pennsylvania. I just want some clarification as to. Um, Scott, that you had mentioned that we were making neg negative comments about the fan vest and the development of like Hemming Mall. I mean, I didn't I mean, say to you, I said people are. Well, whatever. In our conversation, we, this came up. Yeah. And uh, believe me, if, as an individual, there's no one that's more excited about commerce and traffic. That, that will 
that will create a benefit me. Okay, on the other side of that coin, what Tom Schick brought up, I've been aware of that, and that has been a concern, uh, whether it's at like I mean, Mall or else, or in the middle of Williamsport, where they are able to override the zoning ordinances. So this is where the concern lied, lies, and I wanted to make sure that you, please, I'm asking all of you to stay on top of that. I know Joe Ham will also. Yep. Um, we don't want anything like that to happen. Where and this gentleman have expressed numerous times they have no interest in putting low-income housing down in that. Area. I'm not saying low-income, but the, the sign is that clearly indicated uh, residential when the, the, one of the most recent articles. So I'm not arguing the, the point. It's going to benefit me. Believe me, I'm not saying it won't. But what I am saying is that we've got to be aware, just like with everything else that was talked about this morning. So I wanted to bring that up. Thank you. And we're going to welcome, we're going to welcome the developers who have good track records to this county. And, and okay. Kathy, I would I would add, you know, PSATS is a strong organization, and, and my my 14 years of, as part of that, uh, we we would fight long and hard about losing our own zoning within our township. So I'm sure that yeah. PSAT will fight that okay. big time. And I spoke I spoke to Joe Ham there night about on the phone about it, and he is okay. adamantly against it, and uh, he said you know, the, uh, the the townships everybody would be against it. Burles Association. Burles Association, yeah. I'm sure even the commissioners, CCAP, or the... Uh, they get they surprised they every day. They were CCAP. mentioned yeah, last night in my conversation. Yeah, so. I'm sure CCAP yeah. wasn't... Yeah. Was, was, yeah. I was, say about it either. Steve Falls, Blue Muncie. Blue Muncie ago, I never would have thought about standing out and talking to the tangent. But the time is really changing. And, uh, and I appreciate all your, your efforts to keep our county safe and, and the sheriff's department. Well, uh, I just want to make some uh, brief things that maybe uh, that you guys should be aware of or are aware of, but um, EMFs, you know, well, that's going to take out everything. And is there a way to maybe people are trying to prepare for that? And uh, when the phone system goes down, there's satellite radios and things like that. And, all them precautions and equipment you would need would come through you, people. Uh, are, is that anything in your discussions that uh, you're preparing for disaster and perhaps riot because the uh, country is is changing? Uh, the, head of our DP, the head of our DPS, Jeff Hutchins, he works closely with local law enforcement. Uh, everybody, we have a we have an excellent excellent preparedness unit in this county for all kinds of disasters, no matter what it is. You heard the sheriff talk about a response we had two years ago, some outside people coming in who were talking about uh, doing a protest. Uh, as soon as they got here and they saw what was going on in the presence, they turned around and got on the highway and left. Right. They weren't no part of it. Right. They haven't been back since. Right. So our county is always excellent and prepared for stuff uh, that can be something negative in our community. So uh, I have complete confidence in our, our DPS, I have complete confidence in our EMS, and our local law enforcement. Yeah, yeah I, my, I, I appreciate that, and uh, my concern is, is the public, and who can we turn to, you know, you know, is there some kind of a plan or awareness? Yeah. These people are planners, that's why they're, they're in the jobs that they do, and the moment they hear something, they start to plan. And they bring in any agencies that, to assist them, whatever they need, whether it's the marshals, whether it's the FBI, Whatever it is, they bring those agencies into a system. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Uh, online, we have somebody online? Yeah, I've got a, a few. Okay. Thank um, all of you. Appreciate it. Welcome. All from Tony Cooper, South Williamsburg. Good morning. Currently, the Lycoming County Public website is absent from meeting minutes for all of December 2023. A citizen currently has to use the right to know a law to access public meeting minutes. Can you please advise as to when the entire library of historical meeting minutes will be available to the public website? We are catching up on a, a couple months backlog because of uh, turnover, and we hope to have that done in the next 30 days. Um, currently, a right to know is filed with the county as RTK 2024-00025. This right to know is a 30-day extension, and the request is only so you can access to the public meeting minutes. Um, additionally, to 
tomorrow at the prison board, the same question will be asked. Only three months of meeting minutes for the prison board for the year 2023 are available on the public website. Uh, the public was assured by Commissioner Metzger during a recent meeting that this would be investigated. What does the, that mean and what is the progress? Thank you for your time. Uh, again, from Tony Cooper, commissioners, would you please let the public know that tomorrow's prison board meeting is being held at the prison without a live feed? Is there a dial in for the public? Okay. Uh, Janice Fisher, if we're not a sanctuary county, then why are they on the list as one? Through Seeker. Uh, to comment or Tom, problems with Indians, check yourself. Uh, this is opposite of truth. Commissioners meetings are not a place for your platform or personal beliefs. You're, you're, you're judgmental and biased. Tony Cooper, it is amazing to see how much time was spent over the temporary position of an able and plugged in worker the sheriff can get approval for new deputy positions in the MDA, MDJ offices in no time. Carol Johnson, for your information regarding Lycoming County and the non-sanctuary status, and for your patience with people's comments and questions, I appreciate your work and efforts and transparency. Carol Johnson, add thank you to my above statement at the beginning of my initial sentence. Uh, Tony Cooper, South Lanesport, five million county dollars invested in the mall by the board gives the citizens the absolute right to be critical of the process. That's it. Okay, thank you, and, and uh, the prison board meeting will be tomorrow, as a, as announced. It will be at the uh, at the prison at eight thirty. So, um, and there will not be a live feed there. So, if anyone would want to attend it, they would have to. And a person. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, so we've completed our agenda, so the meeting will be adjourned. We'll meet back here on March 14, 2024, at 10 a.m. Good day, everybody. Just five, five minutes late. So we're actually 20 minutes late. I am. Sure I appreciate that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, need, I need a couple minutes. That's all I need. I need to keep going for it. You have a